Well, hello there, good morning. It is sunrise out on the water. The sun, it's back there somewhere. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to do. But we're out here at first light. Gonna try to get on some fish today. Doesn't matter to me what we get. Variety of species, hopefully. Hopefully some bluegill and crappie though, specifically. And I'm gonna put you all in a chest and bring you with me as we fish today. You maybe see over there on the shoreline, uh, water level has dropped overnight. TVA continues to play God with the water levels out here. It looks like it's down another six, eight inches here overnight from just looking at where it was on the shoreline. It, it's continuing to, to drop just about every day. So we're going, it don't matter. These fish, they can't go nowhere. It ain't like they can pack their bags and leave, right? So we're going to make some casts today with an ultralight rod and a gulp minnow. And we're gonna hopefully get a bunch of fish and a variety of fish and have us a dang good time here for about two to three hours before the wind kicks up. It's gonna be another one of those days. We were into, oh, well, I had one hit me right then. We're into March here. March in East Tennessee is one of them months where you, you just get days where you go out and it's flat calm right here at sunrise and by 10, 11 o'clock you got 20 mile an hour winds. It's just unbearable. And that's what they're calling for today. So we're going to try to get our fishing done quick, catch us a bunch of fish, and then I got to work on getting some skipjack after that because I got to leave out tomorrow to go fish a tournament in Alabama. I went down there, pre-fished a little bit a few days ago, come home, and now I'm turning around going back for the tournament. There's a fish, oh, something nipped me. Here's my bait, by the way. I didn't show you all that before I started casting, but this is, if you're new to my channel, this is my favorite ultralight bait. One inch gulp minnow, smelt color, which looks like our shad. 164th ounce jig head, number eight size hook, two pound test line on my ultralight rod. It's a St. Croix panfish series rod. It's six foot long. And I got a 1000 size Daiwa reel. But uh, we're gonna fish till the wind kicks up. Get me some bait. I'm gonna go home, hose off my other kike. Finally, we got one. That's one of these a small bluegill. That's why we couldn't. That's why we couldn't get hold of the dang things when he nipped me before. Because he's so dang small he could barely eat the, the bait. And even though he's small, so small he could barely eat it, boy, he got it deep down in there too, didn't he? You lucky fish, you got that thing any deeper. You'd have had it permanent. But uh what I'm gonna do here while we're doing this ultralight fishing. I'm in my old town kayak today. No electronics, no live scope, no motor, no nothing. Just bare bones setup. We're going to work a shoreline here. And my regular viewer saw me hit this area a couple weeks ago. I was in my other kayak, had the live scope. We saw a bunch of crappie or bluegills, what we ended up catching here, but I did get some crappie off of it too. Uh, on this dock here, it just kind of worked our way around and but today I wanted to, I wanted to come back here today because one, I know there's fish here. Two, this is fairly close to home and we got a situation going on at my house, y'all, today. And I may need to pack up and get the heck out of here in a hurry to go handle some business, if you know what I mean. So uh, y'all may be privy to that possibly. I've got my phone on if my phone rings i'm gonna have to answer the call uh, so y'all hear all that mess and if my security alarm goes off i got security cameras at my house if one of those gets tripped because somebody's out there on my carport y'all may be privy to that too there's another fish by the way this fish he don't this fish don't like at&t either it's a little better one than the last one here. Get that right fish. What, what cell service do you use, fish? He's got Cricket, probably. One of them old flip phones. I don't even know if Cricket's still a thing. 
But I told that story on my unedited catfish video the other day. And so I'll just, I ain't going to repeat the story, but I'll give you the cliff notes in case you ain't watched. I got a war going on with AT&T right now. I'm very angry. This is going to be an unedited video, by the way, in case you were wondering. Raw and uncut, we out here. I'm just bringing y'all along for the ride. Y'all seeing everything today. Every fish caught, every snag, every awkward phone conversation with AT&T representatives. Y'all going to be privy to all of it today just like you were out here fishing with me because <clears throat> i promise you if we were sharing a boat and at&t calls you would hear every cuss word i said in real life just like you're going to hear on this video but anyway we're gonna uh, i ain't gonna tell the whole story i, I didn't told most of you just watch these unedited videos i got a core group of people that's done that watches them all i ain't going to waste your time telling the story again but the cliff's notes version of it is at&t sold me on their internet service so i canceled the utility board fiber optic internet service appointment that i had because AT&T was supposed to be better and supposed to be cheaper. Well, come to find out their salesman lied to me about what my bill was going to be and the discount that I wasn't eligible for. And he put the wrong phone number on the sheet he got because he gave me a sheet of paper with his cell phone number. If I had any questions or problems, give him a call. Well, come to find out it's the wrong damn number. And so I got pissed off. An hour after they had installed the service, I canceled it. Told them to come pack up their fiber optic line and stick it where the sun don't shine. Well, I've sent back the modem router thing since then, but the line was still running from the road to my house. Now it's on top of the ground, they didn't bury it. That's one thing they don't tell you when they're selling you that service that you that you don't get it all buried the same day that they put it in. That's a separate appointment a week or two later. So God forbid you got to mow your yard or anything, you just out of luck. So anyway, we got all this fiber optic line on top of my yard. And so when I canceled the service, the lady on the phone was like, well, the crew that buries the line, they'll come out, they'll just take it up and disconnect it from your house and all that. Like, well, fine. But I wake up this morning, ready to start my day, ready to come out here. Let's make one more pass around this dock before we move on. There may not be any fish under it in good numbers right now because of the water drop. It may have pulled them all out, but Let's just hit it a couple more times just for doo and giggles before we move on. We're going to cover some water today. Without the live scope on this kayak, I don't... Without being able to see places where there's a bunch of fish, I don't feel compelled to stay in one place very long. Sometimes that live scope's a curse because you... <clears throat> you'll Like when I was out here last time, I saw a million fish under that dock. Couldn't hardly get them to bite. But I stayed here an incredibly long time trying to make them bite. When we should have moved on that day. But anyway, I get a text this morning from AT&T. There was something splashing right there. Let's throw over there at that. It may have just been a shad or something. It may have been skipjack too. We got, I know they skipjack in here. But I get a text from AT&T and it's a, uh, guy says he's with the AT&T crew that's burying the wire at my house today and he's wanting to know if there's any like invisible fences or uh, any other service lines that they or irrigation systems that they need to be aware of and so I text him back and I was like look I've canceled the service y'all need to come disconnect the the line from my house and take the wire and when i said that naturally i was expecting a response 
but instead I got crickets. Nothing. So I don't know. Here's a fish. Let's see what this one is. Oh, we got a little yellow bass here. Tiny little yellow bass, but another species nonetheless. This yellow bass, he don't like AT&T neither. So anyway, I got nothing, no response. So I don't have a clue what this crew is gonna do today. Are they gonna, am I gonna get home today and find them having buried that damn wire? Are they gonna come get it? Are they gonna be like, well, we're not, we're not burying it, we'll just put it off. Are they gonna to try to delegate that to somebody else? When it, it does, somebody's gonna remove it. If I gotta do it my damn self, it's gonna get removed. But when it happens, who's gonna plug the hole in my house? Because the technician guy that installed the service literally drilled a hole through my house. He went into my living room, had a big long drill bit and went through the, the wall to the outside to be able to run that line. Somebody's gonna fix that. So anyway, I've got my telephone on, so I may have to take a call on this video. Uh, if I get a notification there from my security camera that somebody's out there, we're going to, y'all may be seeing some of that too, so we're going to figure something out today. Somebody came to my house yesterday, and I don't, and maybe it was AT&T, Maybe because I've, I've rescheduled my utility board appointment for their fiber optic service too. So uh, yesterday I just left my house a few minutes before and my security thing goes off. I threw across that wire over there. But the security thing, I, I turn it on and look and it's a guy walking under my carport and he's got one of those I don't know what they're called. I know what they are, but I don't know what they're called. They're like a measuring device, like it rolls and it counts. You walk beside it and it rolls and it counts the, it measures the distance, how many feet. There's a name for them and I don't know what they are. I'm sure 57 of you will comment down in the comment box and educate me. But anyway, that security camera goes off and there's a guy with one of those and then Here's a fish. I get home yesterday and there's some letters spray painted in my yard. And I don't know what they mean. But it didn't make no sense. It, well, it didn't make no sense either way because the AT&T, the line, is laying on top of the yard right now. The, the technician guy ran it from the road up to the house. And I assumed that was the path that they were gonna to take to bury it had I kept the service. So this, oh, I had another one hit me. Oh, he hit it, he missed it and he come back. These are some small bluegill here. We're gonna move on, see if we can find something better. Look, look right here, look right here. <laughs> that dang fish, he's so small. He's going down through my scupper hole as we push him on through. There he goes. That's one way to get out of this kayak. Just go down through the scupper hole. So anyway, these letters, the line's on one side of my driveway right now that the technician had run. But these letters are over here by my shed and they've been spray painted on the ground. So I'm like, would that be AT&T? Why would they be marking the ground? Is it the utility board possibly? But why would they be running the line over there? And then there's the other wild card that it's just somebody completely random from like TVA or something because I got some TVA power lines that cross my property and I'm like, are they going to be doing something? Are they going to be doing some work out there? You'd think they'd leave a note on the door or something. Usually TVA will. If they're going to be working on their power lines, they'll leave a note on a door with a, just a message what they're going to be doing, when they're going to be there, and a phone number if I got any questions. That's what they've always done historically. But, you know, customer service is going to crap across the board in all aspects of life, so who knows?
But anyway, what I do know is somebody showed up at my house yesterday with one of them measuring things and a can of spray paint and has left some message that you need a decoding ring from the Cracker Jack box to figure out what the hell it means in my yard. So I don't know what's going on today. It's possible I'm going to have AT&T and LCUB utility board out there at the same damn time today. One of them taking a line down and one of them putting a line in. They may cross paths with each other. I don't know what's going down. But either way, my phone's on, so y'all may get privy to some nonsense today at some point. Y'all thought you was tuning in for a fishing video today, didn't you? You just hearing me rant on AT&T and their line salesman. real world buddy real world real life things happen things go down but we're gonna catch some fish today and we're gonna have us a good time before this wind comes i thought real hard about staying home this morning just to make sure everything gets done like it's supposed to get done today but i already lost one day from having to be there while they installed that mess and it took it's like four and a half hours the guy was there putting that mess in just for me to cancel the service an hour later but i, don't, I ain't gonna get lied to i ain't gonna be taken advantage of that salesman knew what he was doing he lied to me bold face lied to me looked me in the eye told me a fake price he gave me a fake phone number and he thought i guarantee you this is what he thought he's like if if I can just get him to sign this, to agree to have it put in, when they show up and they've got everything installed and he's liking the new internet, when he gets that first bill and realizes the price is wrong and he goes to change it, he's not gonna just cancel the service after having just done it. If they've done all that work, he won't cancel it. Or the people at AT&T, when I call to complain and find out what's going on with the bill, they'll just give me a credit or something. Well, guess what? That is, I ain't one, I ain't that kind of guy. I was on top of that stuff right from the get-go. And two, AT&T 1-800 number didn't give a crap about keeping my business, even though they had just installed that service. They didn't give a damn, buddy. They were not going to compromise with me at all. So, he lost his commission. And that makes me feel good on the inside. But he lied to me. I don't like getting lied to. I'd rather you just be honest. He could have still sold me on it. Because, I mean, it was still... The selling point for that that he should have used was the fact that they could get it done quicker than the utility board because the utility board they gave me when i signed up for their service it was a one to four week window when they would come run the line to my house and then they were going to have to schedule an appointment after that for somebody to come out and put it in my house from the outside to the inside so there was no definitive time on when they were going to show up. Like it was just a hope and a prayer that someday that they're, they're going to actually complete this project. So AT&T could have sold me on that alone. And their price, even though it was more expensive than the utility board, without that discount he promised, it was still going to be cheaper than what I currently have with Charter. And it was going to be significantly faster internet. So he could have sold me without, without lying to me is what I'm getting at. But he chose to lie. So, hell with him. Hell with AT&T. They need to come get their damn wire today. And if I get home and my yard is tore up where they buried that line that I ain't going to use, God help their souls. Let's run down here to this other dock. We got, we got other people in the water here today. It's a weekday morning. We got a kayak behind me and a boat over here. I want to make sure we get the premium spots first. Y'all need to spray some WD-40 on my pedals, too. They're squeaking. Run down here with me, y'all. We're going to go hit this other dock. 
And I'm gonna go over here and hit this brush in a minute too. There wasn't nothing over there on that dock that we were just on. And a small bluegill. Got more on it there a couple weeks ago, but the water was higher. So I don't know. Maybe they're there. And I just wasn't getting a bait near them or triggering a strike, or maybe the water drop has pulled them out. Either way, it don't really matter. We're gonna find a bunch of fish down through here today anyway. That's one thing about this technique is if they fish there and you get this bait in front of them, they're gonna eat it. Let's get to over here and make some casts around this dock. And then we're gonna run over here. I don't know what that's floating down there. I think somebody set out some jugs or something. Damned old jug fisherman. So anyway, y'all, what a way to start out the video, man. Uh, 10, 15, here's a fish. First cast on this dock. Yeah, that's a little better bluegill right there. I'm hoping these fish, whatever that big school was there a couple weeks ago if they've pulled off that other dock i'm hoping they've moved to the next this next one down here my regular viewers probably disappointed that we're hitting the same creek again after i just hit it a couple weeks ago but the thing about this creek is it's close to the house so if I got a skedaddle today to go educate some AT&T workers on what they're going to do, I can get home quickly. I may have to do that today. But nevertheless, bringing y'all with me for the fishing, the catching, and the griping about everything that you got to deal with that you don't want to deal with with idiot people there's a lot of people i'm filming this on a thursday morning and i kid you not there's a kayak and two boats in here besides me i thought i thought especially here at first light when it's still cold i'd have at least a hour or two to have the place to myself shows what I know it's all right we're gonna make the most of it I want to catch some fish today I'm in the mood to do some ultralight fishing I've been doing a lot of cat fishing lately got that tournament coming up here in Alabama which I'll be honest with you, I ain't feeling confident at all on that tournament, man. I've went down to Alabama two separate sessions. Went down there a couple weeks ago. Just spent two days fishing on Wilson. It's our tournament. We can... Oh, something followed me up right there. Did you see that? You probably couldn't see that. Something followed me. He followed it all the way up. I don't know what he was, but he was a bigger fish. There's something. Let's see what this is. This one's a little bigger right here now. That's a big bluegill. This bluegill's lucky today because I am gonna catch some skipjack to take to Alabama for the tournament, but I ain't taking nothing else. Yeah, there we go. I've got some frozen suckers I'll probably take. But I ain't going to take no bluegill. And you can't use crappie in Alabama. It's not a legal bait. So if we catch any of those, I ain't going to take them.
I'll spend a little more time on this dock though, I think. We got some fish in here. I'm gonna work back around it here. The wind has moved us on a little too quickly. Let's back it up here. Y'all need to do something with that squeaking. I gotta get some WD-40 or something here. That's gonna drive us crazy. comes another boat over there too. Yeah, see anyway, I went down there, Alabama, a couple weeks ago, spent two days. And then I went earlier this week and I spent two days. And, and first time I went down, I fished on Wilson. And this past time I focused on Pickwick because we can fish either one for the tournament. Basically, the top of Wilson to the bottom of Pickwick is our tournament boundaries, any public launch site. And it's been a struggle down there, honestly. I mean, Alabama is known for its huge catfish. I mean, it's a trophy catfish factory down there. I mean, you see big, big fish po pictures posted every day but I absolutely struggled down there the first session there on Wilson here's another fish another small bluegill uh, but the first session I done on Wilson the first time ever fishing there y'all saw that video caught several fish nothing no monsters but I caught some decent fish and and uh I was feeling pretty good about it. Went out the next day. Could not get anything going. Fished three different spots. Caught a grand total of one fish. I caught another one right here. I've caught two fish on back-to-back -back casts here on this trip. I got one fish in three spots down there in Alabama. That second day I fished down there. We've got more productivity here in one minute than what I had in an entire day down there in Alabama. There's another, Lord Almighty, another boat comes in. Man, this place is packed today on a Thursday. Boy, this fish right here has done it good, man. Boy, I've bit my dang jig head. Fish, you've done it good, buddy. He's got that dang thing buried right in his nose and I've bent my jig trying to get it out. I may ruin this jig head right here. There we go, Lord, fish, you've done a number on it. Let's see if we can salvage this thing. I think I've ripped my gulp too. Here's what we're gonna have to do, y'all. I've done, look what I've done. I've bent that dang thing. Let's just put a new one on. So I put such a bend in, I'm afraid if we bend it back, I'm gonna weaken that hook and then we're gonna end up, we're gonna end up breaking off on a fish or something here. So let's just put a new one on. This is my jig box right here. I don't know if I've, I can't remember if I've showed you all this on video or not. I started keeping this in my life jacket. I used to have a bigger box, but I keep forgetting to put it in the kayak that I was using on a particular day. I'd forget about it. I'd get where I was going. I wouldn't have no dang jig heads. So I finally, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get me a smaller box, and I'm going to just keep it in my life jacket. That way I always got it no matter what kayak I'm in. But um, anyway, first time down there on Wilson, one good trip, one bad trip. So I went back down there a few days ago and I was like, I'm gonna fish on Pickwick this time. And, you know, again, brand new places to me, never, never fished there before. Day one, I go out and the day started slow. I was doing some anchor fishing on a, on a hump 
and I just couldn't I couldn't get a bite man I couldn't get anything going and so I started dragging baits and that video hasn't come out yet by the time it hasn't come out yet with me filming this today but it's coming out so you've probably seen it before you've seen this video from our regular viewers but I ended up having a productive day it was slow overall but I got several fish got a pretty good fish and was feeling like I was learning something and I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna take that knowledge I'm gonna go off the next day and I'm gonna do much better because I'm not gonna waste all that time like I did to start that trip and would you believe I went out the next day and got completely skunked <laughs> he just couldn't buy fish God Almighty, there's another one. Man, people are everywhere back here. I think that's the jug guy right there, maybe. We'll hit this from a different angle here. Let me circle back around. I want to hit it from a different. I want to move off from it and be able to hit it from a side angle here if I can. But anyway, Pickwick, just like Wilson, I have one good productive session and one where I got completely skunked. <laughs> it's like I have no you know typically pre-fishing for a tournament you want to get a pattern down get a plan what you're going to do on tournament day get a little confidence that you've at least got something figured out and buddy I'm going to tell you something my pre-fishing has wrecked my confidence I, I think there's about a 50% chance that I'm gonna go down there on Saturday and fish this tournament and get completely skunked. I think there's a, a at least a 50% chance that's gonna happen. And even if I do catch some fish because I haven't got any monsters down there in four sessions, four days of fishing down there, I've not gotten any trophy class fish. I'm like, man, even if I do get on some fish, what am I gonna finish, 10th place? I think, is that my goal, a top 10, not embarrass myself down there? So, I'm not feeling good about it. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be dragging down there. That's, uh, that's the only way I've caught fish down there. I've tried anchoring. I've, I've put baits on bottom. I've suspended baits. I've drifted with suspended baits. The only way I've been able to catch fish down there is dragging. So that's what I'm going to do. Where I'm going to do it at, just throw a dart at a map, I guess. I think the winner. It's probably going to be on Pickwick. That's my guess. With that said, I'm probably going to be on Wilson. I'd say there's 88% chance I'm going to be on Wilson. Even though I think the winning... The, the winning... Whoever wins is probably going to be on Pickwick. But... I think... I think... I think Wilson's my better play, just from the location of it. Our check-in, here's the thing. Our check-in location. Let's throw over there, that was splashing. It was a terrible cast. I think it might have been a shad or something. The check-in location is in Florence. 
Alabama. And so the tournament runs seven to three. We've got an hour to make it back to the check-in at Florence. So 4 p.m. we gotta be back there. If I fish on Pickwick, it's about 40 minutes to get from one of the launches that I would probably be using down there back to the check-in location. So that's a time crunch. I'm probably going to have to pack up and leave before tournament time ends just to make sure I make it back. The other wild card is one of the launches I used down there on pre-fishing day, there was a train track I got stuck behind for like 10 minutes while a train went through. I'm like, boy, that would be something. You get on tournament day, you're trying to make it back, you're running late, and then you get stuck behind a train. So there's that. Whereas if I fish on Wilson, I'm only going to be about 20 minutes away from the check-in. So I'm going to be able to fish right up until quitting time. And I think with as poorly as I've done down there, I'm probably going to need every second I can to have a chance. So I think that's probably the play for me. If I had done better on Pickwick and felt like I could overcome the lost time, then I'd be okay with it. But I just don't, I don't have the confidence I'm gonna be able to do that. So I think that's probably the play. I think the whoever wins will be on Pickwick and I think I'll be on Wilson finishing either in 10th place or getting skunked. But I've committed to it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see it through. Better or worse. You gotta get a little bit lucky in these things. I mean there's there's obviously, I mean there's skill involved. That's why you see the same people at the top of the leaderboard pretty much every tournament. It's the same names up top. But there is some luck involved in I mean, you, to win, you, you've got to have some things go your way. you got to catch some breaks. you got to get your bait in front of a big fish. You need them to eat it. You need them to stay hooked up. You need to be able to land them. You need to be able to score them without anything going wrong. And that requires a little bit of luck. I mean, let's be real, it does. So anytime you got baits in the water, you've always got a chance of getting lucky. And so I'm going to need to get lucky down there. <laughs> feel like I'm due. This will be my tournament day. It'll be my fifth day down there fishing these two lakes. And so I feel like I'm due for a big fish. And the fish I've gotten haven't been bad by any stretch. I mean, they've been good quality. But they've not been them trophy class, them tournament winning fish that I'm going to need three of on tournament day. We've worked these poles pretty... Okay, here, there's some... Oh, he hit me. I thought for... When we first rolled up on this dock, I thought we were going to get on some fish here, but it seems to be kind of sporadic. Trying to, trying to look around and see where everybody else is at here. I really, I'm, I guess I'm naive. I'm stupid because a couple weeks ago when I come out here and film that other video, there was way too many damn people in here. But today, I mean, we've seen there's the kayak and Four, four boats now we've seen in here. That's a lot for a Thursday morning. 
I miss the days where you could go out and fish on a weekday morning and not see a soul. Those were the days. This is just a new reality, the new world we live in, folks. Can't get a lick of customer service out of AT&T and you can't get a moment's peace on the water by yourself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this this morning. Two or three hours. I'm gonna work on getting some bait after that. I brought my skipjack rods with me here. If we see some, we'll try to catch them. I'll troll my wherever we end up. I'll troll my way back to the car. Here's a fish. Uh, I'll troll my way back, see if I can pick off some. If I am, I'll keep doing that. If not, I've got another place I've been getting them lately off the bank. Pretty confident I can go load up today. Ideally, I would catch them tomorrow before I leave to go to Alabama. That would be the best case scenario, just to have them as fresh as possible. But the problem tomorrow is we're supposed to have some, uh, some storms and some heavy rain. And so I feel like if I don't get them today, there's a chance I might not be able to get them at all. And that boy, that'd be something. I've got some suckers frozen, so I, mean, I wouldn't be going down there with nothing, but it's better I just go ahead and get some today just to be safe. So we'll do this here till the wind starts blowing. Troll the way back, see if we pick off a few, and then if that don't pan out, I'll just... Oh, another one right there. If that don't work out, let's go hit that bank spot. <clears throat> then I'm on tomorrow, go down there. We got to do our pre-tournament meetup between six and eight, where we pick up our tournament identifier and do our board check. And so I'm gonna leave out tomorrow afternoon, go down there, spend the night, and then fish the tournament and drive home afterwards. It's only four hours. It's not a bad drive. My house to Florence is like right at four hours, four hours ten minutes. So it's it's not bad. We'll stay at the at the Comfort Inn down there. It's where I've been staying on my previous trips down. I like a Comfort Inn. It's kind of become my go-to. Let's go over here to the other side. This boat over here is crossed over in front of us. I guess he's going to hit that other dock. So let's run over here. And we'll work down this other shoreline that he just went down. Let's see if we can catch the fish he left. There's some more trees and stuff that, that comes over into the water over here. We'll see if we can't snag a jig in. We need to lose about five or six more today. Need some WD-40. We got WD-40 in pedals. That squeaking will drive you all. That will get you to click off this video quicker than anything. But that comfort in. And this is silly. When y'all hear this. But here's why I like comfort ins. Versus other hotels. When you go... When you go to a hotel and you're pulling a boat or a trailer, kayak trailer, you got to be able to park that dang thing. And a lot of these hotels have very poorly designed parking lots. They won't have any pull through spaces. Even the parking lots that could have pull through spaces won't. They'll have them little concrete curbs marking spaces and stuff you can't pull through and so when you're traveling with a kayak or boat or whatever you you, you don't want to have to park down the road you want to be able to park in the parking lot with with preferably like street lights and stuff so all your stuff don't get stolen 
a lot of these hotels you pull in the parking lot you got nowhere to park but the comfort in no matter where i've been in the country a comfort in always has a, a a parking lot that has been well thought out with pull through spaces so you can park and so that's why they've kind of become my go-to and the one down there in florence alabama sure enough you got parking spots you can park a trailer it blows my mind that these hotels don't factor that in especially places that you go where you know people are going to be traveling to fish i mean if it's like a if you've got a big well-known lake if it's a touristy type place for people a destination fishing spot how are you going to have a parking lot that don't have accommodations for people pulling trailers? That's just silly. Look, I, I mean, I ain't telling these hotels how to do their jobs. But I could give them some advice on how to make more money. And one would be, think about your parking lot when you build a hotel. Because, I mean, I've there's been times I've rolled into towns... And, you know, I'll pull up Expedia or whatever and look at what's uh, going to be the best rate. And you go to that hotel to check out the parking lot before you book. And you're like, well, can't stay. Got to move on. Can't park. Cost them business. And I can't believe I'm alone in that. So a well-thought-out parking lot will get them more business. Another thing... And I've talked about this before. Y'all really sick of hearing about this, my regular viewers. But there's the issue of toilet paper in these hotels. It's 2024. Why is a hotel... Why is a hotel still putting toilet paper in the bathroom? Why don't they all have bidets? Look, I know... In our caveman society we live in most people are still toilet paper users most people are still wiping their hind ends they're not sophisticated and cultured like i am using a bidet but if these hotels would install bidets in all of their rooms and do a little bit of education on how to properly use them the, i mean a big chain like you take comfort in I don't know how many locations they have throughout the United States. It's a bunch. I'm sure every town you go to has got a comfort in, it seems like. Boy, they got thousands of hotels. You think about how many rolls of toilet paper a chain like that goes through in a year. I mean, if they would eliminate toilet paper and install bidets, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. In, in, in saved expenses. I mean, that would get their CEO a, a nice bonus at the end of the year. Just money saved on that. And it would make it better for cultured people like me. When you travel, that's always the worst part. Having to relearn. Thank goodness it's muscle memory. But you got to learn how to wipe your hind end again. Whereas you know, when I'm at home, I'm pressure washing that thing. So, these hotels need to get their act together. It's 2024. I mean, it's it's time. Put bidets in every room. A little education on how to properly use them. It change. It would change society. I mean, I, I don't know how much they spend on toilet paper. I have no idea. I have to assume it's hundreds of thousands of dollars across their all their locations combined. And of course, too, when they buy, I mean, it, they're not buying Charmin and put it in there. I mean, they're buying that that old John Wayne toilet paper. Don't take shit off nobody. So you have to end up using a whole lot more, which then just is wasteful. You, you and so that increases their costs more. So I mean, I again, I I ain't never worked in no hotel industry. 
but I've got ideas that would that would make them money with a properly designed parking lot, boosting their boosting their rooms getting booked, and then the whole toilet paper thing saving them thousands, hundreds of thousands. I mean, they should hire me. I I I, I spend a lot of time fishing, obviously, but my my evenings and nights are free for consultation if they want to hire me as a consultant i could educate these hotel ceos on how to properly run their business i'm full of good ideas i got some ideas from at&t too if they call today by gosh and they better call they better call they better text they better not bury that damn line so help me god they tear up my yard to bury a line for a canceled service lord help them stand back here to see who's behind us but we ain't getting nothing on this side over here there's some brush up around the corner there but I, as many boats as we've seen in here I'd about be willing to bet somebody's sitting on it Fellow over there caught him something off that tree. Looks like he got a crappie. We were going to fish those trees as we made our way down to that dock, but he cut in front of me. We just all going to be leapfrogging each other in here today. It'd be all right. There's plenty of plenty of fish for all of us. I've had a, I've had a yearning to do this lately though. Going down there in Alabama, beautiful country down there in Alabama. I mean, just, you know, me being a Tennessee Vols fan, I don't really get along with Alabama people all that much, but the state of Alabama and just from a geographic standpoint, beautiful country down there, beautiful state. But I see all them bluff walls down there on Wilson and Pickwick, and I'm like, man, he's got to be fish all over them bluff walls. It seems like it'd be a, a smallmouth heaven down there to take this ultralight rod and just work them bluff walls all day. And I've wanted to do it, but, and I had my ultralight rod with me. So I thought if I really got on the cats and figured out a plan, I, I could spend us some time ultralight fishing down there because I wouldn't want to be sticking all them fish right before the tournament if I really got on a location that was stacked with them. But I'd done so poorly fishing for the cats that I couldn't justify spending time doing the ultralight fishing because I just uh, felt like I needed to spend every second trying to figure out something on the cats. So I never... I never made the first cast with the ultralight rod, so I've been in the mood. I knew coming out here today would be the prime time to do it because I'm out of bait. So I couldn't go catfishing this morning anyway. And knew we had this window here this morning where the winds were going to be calm, and I'm like, today's the day. But so far, these fish don't give a damn. We're just going to kind of quickly make our way down through here now. And this side here just don't seem to be very productive. We'll hit these trees and see if there's something on there. But we're going to try to make our way around the corner here. And hopefully, hopefully there ain't somebody sitting on that other brush. Maybe we can catch something there. I'll call something here, all right. Call part of that tree. See if we can get this one back. No, 
Oh, come on. Oh, crap. Broke that and off. Here comes a... Let's just run down here because that boat's coming and we got to retie. Let's just go down here. If there ain't somebody sitting on this brush down here, we're going to try to get on it that way. We can at least claim a spot for ourselves. I'd like to fish these trees here, but they probably ain't nothing on it. This side here don't get sun until later in the morning. You can see that side over yonder there. Where he's at is getting the sun right now. I'd say that might have a, a little bit of an effect on things first thing this morning. Fingers crossed here. So far, so good. And by them, I think we're good. All right. Well, that's the first break we've caught all morning. Nobody on this spot. Well, there's another boat over coming this way. God almighty, there's a bunch of people out here today. Let's get us retied right quick. They coming this way, we going that way. Hopefully. Hopefully they'll move along. And hopefully this brush will be stacked. I'll throw a few jig heads out on my magnet here so we don't keep getting in that box. But Well, here comes that one boat that was behind us. He's coming out now. I need to bust out my reading glasses too to thread that thing line through. One of my channel members last year got me some reading glasses and it's one of the most helpful gifts ever because I can't have C to put this thin line between them that jig head eye anymore can't hardly thread it through and I refuse to go to the eye doctor to get glasses so even though I've turned 30 12 times I just don't feel like I'm at that age yet where I should have to go to the eye doctor I sure was hoping to have caught about 30 more fish than what we've got so far. Well, there's one boat out of here. If we could get about four more out of here, we'd be set. We might get some peace around here today. Okay. There's still nothing heard back from AT&T. I swear y'all, man, if they, I texted that guy back instantly. I told him I'd cancel that service. He needs to come disconnect the line. Crickets no response let me just make sure i ain't telling lies here i ain't heard that phone ding i don't think y'all have either nope no response yeah let's make some cast in here 
hopefully there's something over here on this brush. Usually I've had good success here, this whole stretch right down through here. There's something right there. Oh, yellow bass. Wouldn't hurt my feelings to get into some of these. This one's bigger than that one that we got to our first thing. Nice. Them right there, boy, them things are sharp as all get out. I don't know if these are legal to use in Alabama for bait or not. I don't even know if they're a native fish to Alabama or not. I'm just going to take skipjack and them suckers, take a couple frozen suckers with me. I don't like using frozen bait for a tournament purpose, but I, I, I'm de I wouldn't, I'm not going to throw a net today at all, but I know the odds, even if I did, the odds of me getting any suckers are slim. Now, I know everybody down there is going to be throwing skipjack, so it'd be nice to have another option just to mix things up. If we're all doing the same thing in the same types of places, if you can do something to make yourself a little different, I got a feeling everybody down there is going to be dragging. Maybe one or two guys at the dams bumping, but... I have to believe most of the people down there is going to be dragging. Most of them is going to be using planer bore. That's what all of them guys do in the in the catfish tournament world nowadays. They all pull boards. It's ridiculous. They think if they got ten baits out, they got better odds of catching a fish. But my philosophy is, if I can't catch them with two baits, I ain't going to catch them with ten. So they can run their dang boards and I'll go down there with two rods and, and finish in 10th place, by gosh. <laughs> and then I'll hear, I'll hear about it from them for the next month, how, how I should have been pulling boards. I just hate pulling player boards. I hate doing it. I don't mind dragging with two rods. It's not my favorite way to fish, but I'm willing to do it. But boards, this takes all the fun out of it. You got so much dang line out and it just, you fighting a board for part of it. And it's just, I hate it. Fellas over there spending quite a bit of time on that dock. They must be on something over there. I seen that other boy over there in the boat. He looked like he had him a crappie there earlier. But I ain't seen him catch nothing since. We're going to fish this little stretch here and then we're going to we're going to make a run over here to the other part of this creek branches. We're going to go down the other branch and hope to God there's less people there. If we go over there to the other side and it's stacked with people, I'll probably just go to the house. Go get some bait and get the heck out of here. I can't remember exactly where that brush is at over here. It's somewhere, it's somewhere between that tree and that one. I don't know exactly where it's at. There's clearly some shad though, cause there's just some um, flipping right there. I 
I'll tell you something else I gotta do too when I get back. Is I gotta have some compost delivered. I made that raised bed garden last fall and I filled it partially up. I'd put down a layer of old wood and then put some I'd had some topsoil brought in to fill some holes in my yard. And so I put down a layer of topsoil, then a layer of leaves, and then some more topsoil. And I left about eight to ten inches in that bed and I was going to put down some compost and mix it in with the soil. And so I got to have some of that brought in. I called a fella yesterday because there's a sign up on the road uh, to get here actually there's a sign up that says mushroom compost and topsoil and all that and a phone number and so I called it but he don't deliver and so I'm going to have to have it delivered so I'm going to have to find somebody to do that for me and I need to sell my tiller too Need to get it. Need to get it listed online. This ain't no point. I ain't gonna use it this year. Might as well sell the thing. I don't know what that was behind me. There's a big splash over there behind me. I don't know what that was. Must have been a carp or something. But yeah, I'm gonna sell that tiller. I looked them up on marketplace i've got a cub cadet rt65 it's a rear tine and i bought it back in i think it was 2013 or 2014 so i've had it 10 years and it's been it's been great cranks right up every time here's fish oh this little bit oh he come free that was a little bigger bigger fish right there I don't know what that was, but that was bigger. But that tiller runs perfect. I just, I use it and then I drain the gas out of it and it, it sits there. And next spring, I'll go to use it again, put some gas in it, crank right up. I mean, it's just been, it's been awesome, but I bought it. I think I paid $500 for it. I bought it used. And I was looking them up there on Marketplace the other day see what i get for it and all the ones listed on there are 600 700 750. i was like oh hell i may i may turn a profit on this thing at the very least i should get my money back out of it but if i ain't gonna use it ain't no point in keeping it just taking up space that i don't have I'm hoping I'm gonna like that raised bed system. It's it's four foot wide and twenty feet long. Something hit me just then. But yeah, four feet wide, twenty feet long. I'm just gonna plant the stuff that I'm actually gonna eat. And here comes another damn boat. Every year that I've run a big garden, I end up giving most of it away or throwing it away because i can't eat it all so this year i'm just doing a few pepper plants you know, maybe two or three tomato plants and cucumbers some peas just the stuff that i'm actually going to eat enough for me and that's it i think my jig's hitting that brush right there i think that's what's going on Oh, that's that fella running jugs right there. You can't stand them old jug fishermen. I leave them things everywhere. Set them out all night and then they end up miles away and fish get hung up in trees and I can't stand it. I wish they'd outlaw them things. So that and trot lines. Can't stand either one of them. I 
I'll tell you what, this area here ain't panned out, has it? Got that one yellow bass and nothing else. Normally this area right through here does me right. Not, not so far this morning. All right, let's try this. Let's run over here to the other fork in this creek. There's a bunch of docks on that other side and I'm hoping maybe the sun will be hitting it right now too. And maybe, just maybe, if all the boats are over here, there won't be any over there. this up here for a second y'all just come along for the ride getting our exercise in here this morning I even remember to bring the net up there today not that we've needed it yet I actually remembered it though I, was, uh, I can't remember much these days but I remember that yeah we'll run over here like I said just the creek there's another branch goes down the other side it's got a lot more a lot more houses and a lot more docks well, we'll see what we can't get over there I'm, I'm hoping that the sun is hitting it i think you know that one bank we were on and then this this area here where that brush is at it's still in the shade right now this morning so not that that makes a difference, but water temps still being cooler. The sunny side could be could be where the fish are most active right now. These docks coming up here on our right, they're out of water pretty much. It looks like TVA's dropped the water, I don't know, six inches to a foot overnight just looking at the water line every day it's mostly dropping we had that rain i don't know two weeks ago seems like the last time i filmed here i think it's about two weeks ago and the water was still super muddy they've been spilling at the dam moving all that water through so it just keeps water level keeps changing every day i don't mind water level going up but water level going down seems to seems to have a negative impact on the fishing usually there's a barge over there I should have probably turned the camera off for this and restarted once I got over here. I don't know how many of y'all really want to watch my legs just spin the pedals. <laughs> if you're watching this right now, you're probably reevaluating your life decisions, and I can't blame you for it. I should have actually probably. You know what? Let's do that. Should have thrown out these damn skipjack rigs while I was trolling over here to the other side. Y'all should have tapped me on the shoulder. I said, Justin, throw out them skipjack rigs. Can't count onions for nothing. Good thing I like ins. I've been getting a few skipjack over here, but lately my better skipjack production has come off of a bank spot 
in a different creek. That's probably where I'll end up getting them today. But I did bring these rods. So I was going to wherever we ended up and I knew I was going to want to hit this branch over here of this creek today on the ultralight session I thought I'd just troll my way back to the car and if I picked off some great and if not well I'll just hit that bank spot but since we're making it over here so much quicker than I anticipated because of all the people on the water today might as well just do it on the way so far so good so far i ain't seeing nobody over here on this side i think that's something about people like you can have 10 boats on the water and we'll all be within 50 yards of each other and meanwhile you got the whole rest of the lake nobody's nobody's anywhere it's funny how that works yeah we'll start here start here on this bank because it's getting all the sun and we'll work our way around all these docks down through here that's gonna be the plan we can't do no worse over here than what we've done on the other side that's for dang sure and at least over here we ain't gonna have to deal with no boats at least for the moment if somebody sees me fishing over here they'll be they'll they'll probably be over here too trying to get on top of you y'all if y'all didn't fast forward through this y'all are good people i've had people complain about my braid too on these on these skipjack rigs people hate hearing that braid sound when i'm reeling in fish unfortunately for them though i like the braid for skipjack so i ain't giving it up that braid allows me to kind of horse those fish in. The, I use 30 pounds. It's like six pound diameter. It allows me to cast a reasonable distance. And that heavier line allows me to horse those skipjack in. When you hook them, you want to be able to... Oh, God Almighty, now we got... We got a whole construction operation going on over here. I just thought we wouldn't have no people to deal with. But um, Skipjack, if you let them play around too much, you let them come up and jump, they're going to spit that hook. So when you hook one, if you're trying to get bait, now if you just fun fishing, by all means, let them jump. I mean, they're, they're a fun fish to catch because they they come make these flying leaps out of the water and they look like tarpon like saltwater tarpon that's why we call them tennessee tarpon so i mean they're a fun fish to catch but if you're trying to get them for bait and like you need them you need to land them when you hook them then you need to try to get them in and get them landed as quick as possible before they have a chance to spit that hook and that's so that's why i like the braid and unfortunately that braid pulling through them guides on the rod makes that noise and it drives people bonkers that's one of my every time i use them rods on video that's one of the biggest complaints i get If I, if I rank the complaints, people complain about everything. I would say, historically, my laugh has been the number one thing people have complained about. People, people hate my laugh and the way I talk. Uh, that's probably number one. It's a good thing I don't really like people or else I'd probably have a complex about it, as many complaints as I've had. Um, what else do people complain about? Oh, and these unedited videos, a lot of people complain they're too long. <laughs> I mean, it's like, 
they'll say i love your videos but i hate these long ones i don't have nobody has time for this i'm like so you saw the video was two hours three hours four hours long before you clicked on it but you clicked on it anyway just so you could complain and the people who preface it with something nice those people piss me off even more than the people who just straight up complain because like man i love your videos i watch them all but i really wish you wouldn't do these anymore i just don't have time for it I, the, the passive aggressive complaints like that just for some reason they just stick in my crawl like if you're going to complain complain don't don't preface it with something nice just own it don't do the passive aggressive just own it own your complaint first off you shouldn't be complaining anyway this crap's free yeah it ain't like you it ain't like it's me paying for at&t here or something you know it's it's free content if you don't like it watch something else there's five billion channels on youtube new videos uploaded millions of videos every day plenty of stuff to watch besides me so anyway that's another complaint i get a lot bait selection that's the big one that one really that's not something i hear all the time because if i'm using skipjack or shad even bluegill nobody cares boy use a crappie use a bass white bass here's something we've had a dry spell from fish but we got one here it's a little better bluegill come here bluegill i'm happy to see you where y'all been today this has been a very not very productive trip on the numbers so far in the first hour here hour and a half how long we've been at this but um yeah bait the the videos where i use something other than skipjack shad or bluegill amazing the, the not just the complaints but the visceral nature of the complaints like they're passionate about how much they hate me and what i'm doing then occasionally i'll say something on video that'll that'll rub people the wrong way like i might make a joke about women or something and then all the the 11 women in my audience will be on me about it but mostly length of videos bait as we reel in another fish here and my laugh those are the biggest complaints this bluegills he's got his own complaint he's complaining he's got a hook in the face that fish ain't seen many hooks today because there ain't nobody over here the all the boats are on the other side They ain't, I mean, they ain't a single boat down this branch of the creek, and I don't want to jinx it. But, like, how do we see that many on the other side and nobody's over here? And the sun is shining over here. I mean, I don't know. I mean, just in my mind, I see the sun. Water temp's still in the 50s. You got sun hitting these rocks over here. I would just assume these fish would turn on before the shaded side. What do I know? I know at and in trouble though. If I go home and they've buried that damn line, I'll rip it up myself. I just don't want them tearing up my yard. Cause they've run I don't know how many feet it is, but I mean, it's a long ways from the pole down at the road up to my house. And the way they, the way they had to run it, he ran it from the pole and then it goes this way to get over to my driveway, then up my driveway. Then he go, went diagonal through the yard around the front of the house this way. And it's like, that's a big area. And they need to do something about that hole in my house too. I don't know what they're gonna do with that. 
I'm hoping when the utility board comes, I'm hoping they use that same hole. I wasn't real happy with the fact that he was gonna drill that hole in the house. Cause I thought, if you're running that line, why don't you just run it under the house like, like Charter Internet did years ago. Cause that line, it goes under the house and up through the floor right there in the living room where the TV set is. So I can put that modem behind the TV and kind of hide it. But the at and guy, when he come out, he says they don't do crawl spaces. So, and I can't blame him for that. Hell, I don't want to be in no crawl space either. Makes me a little uncomfortable. I get uh, claustrophobic. I can't even hardly say the word, but you know what I'm trying to say. I get, I get claustrophobic just watching people in tight spaces. Like sometimes videos on social media will pop up where people are doing cave stuff and they're trying to wedge themselves through these. And first off, how big an idiot are you if you want to go down in a hole in the ground that's full of bats and wedge yourself into these tiny places that you can't even turn around? I mean, I get anxious just... Oh no, I've snagged a branch on this thing. I get anxious just thinking about it. But I can't do the, the tight spaces. Like, I just can't. I can't do it. I, I just, I can't watch the videos on it. It gives me anxiety just thinking about it. There it comes up. Good, we got it back. I mean, honestly, I've thought about this. Like, when I die, and, you know, once you're dead, I mean, hell, you're dead. What do you care? But the thought of me being buried in a coffin that's barely bigger than me, like being trapped in that box underground, that's scarier than actually dying. Like that, that makes me, the, the thought of being, oh my God, I just snagged the tree again. I set the hook hard in at that time too. I bet we ain't getting that now. But the thought of being in the dang coffin scares me more than the thought of actually dying and how I'm gonna die. Now, I know some people's gonna be like, well, Justin, just get cremated. No, well, I don't know that getting burned in an incinerator is, gives me any less anxiety really you still got to be when they slide you into that incinerator I mean that's a cramped space too so I don't know I don't know why it bothers me but it does there's just something about it I, I can't I can't watch them videos I can't relate to the type of people who would want to go down in them caves and and wedge themselves in tight places. I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand it. I don't know why you'd even want to go in a cave to begin with. I mean, they're just, they're full of bats. When I was a kid, we took a field trip. I don't remember what grade we was in, but you, everybody in East Tennessee, if you go to school, within a couple hour drive of the Lost Sea, you're gonna to have to take a field trip there. That's just, I guess it's written into law that everybody, everybody that goes to school in Tennessee has to go to the Lost Sea. And for those of you that uh, don't live in Tennessee, maybe you've never heard of it, the Lost Sea is basically a cave underground with a lake in there. And they've put fish in it. I don't know if them fish are natural there or if they've been stocked, but there's trout in there. And so they take you, they take you down in this cave and you walk around and you look at these, these kind of rocks that are different. And you get on these boats with glass bottoms and you, they take you around and it's, you know, it's overrated basically what I'm getting at. If you, if you don't live here, 
don't put it on your to-do list to come to come visit it's just one thing the only reason they stay in business is because there's a law that says every every child in elementary school has to go to this thing on a field trip that's the only way they stay in business but nevertheless you down there in a cave underground it can be 90 degrees outside and it's 40 down in that cave it's cold in there it's cold it's i just don't you're never going to see me doing no spelunking i think that's what they call it and that in itself is a stupid word like how do you uh, who come up with cave caving who's like yeah let's call this spelunking that's dumb I've probably just uh, offended 1% of my audience who is into going down to caves and stuff. It can't be a very, it can't be a very high percentage of people who does that kind of thing. This area here, this is real, this is dirt shallow back over here. We're gonna spin around and start working these docks down through here now. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna work a dock across the channel because there's 57 construction workers over there. I wish y'all catch some fish already. This is getting embarrassing here. We normally these ultralight videos, you you catch a bunch of fish, but today we just ain't got very many. I don't know how many we've got total, but only a few bluegill and a couple of yellow bass and not a single crappie so far. It's nice to be out in this kayak again though. I've been, most of my trips lately have been in my, in my Hobie with the motor and the graph and live scope and all that. And I've been craving some simplicity again. I think that's one of the most demoralizing things. Like going down there, for instance, at last, day in Alabama and, and not catching a fish. It's like, I've got that Hobie kayak with a trolling motor with GPS, got live scope. Like what excuse do I have to not catch a fish with all that crap on the kayak, you know? It's, it's just, it's damn near the more. I mean, you got five grand worth of electronics between the motor and the live scope, and you can't catch a damn fish. It's like, what the hell does a man have to do? And then you start. Then, then I'm like, I, I toted that damn thing to Alabama, lugged the batteries in to the hotel to recharge them, go into all that hassle. And I'm like, you know what? I could have went down there with a paddle kayak with no motor, no fish finder of any kind, no batteries, and just a, not even having pedals, just a dang paddle. And I could have caught just as many fish as what I did with all that crap on there. And so it's kind of demoralizing. Back before, before I added all that stuff, when I was just going fishing, for, for the longest time, I was fishing out of a kayak that I paddled. I had a Native Ultimate. It was a 2007 model, 14 and a half foot long. I paddled that thing and I had a little uh, for, for the longest time, I didn't have any electronics. Then I eventually did add a basic fish finder on it. But, I mean, I, I caught a lot of fish in that thing. But when I would go out and have a day that, that wasn't really successful, and maybe I didn't catch anything, or just a couple small fish, whatever, 
I, I, I it didn't bother me. I mean, obviously, you want to catch fish every time you go out, but it, it was just so what. I still got to enjoy the day being out in the kayak. But once I started adding, something splashed back there. Once I start adding all the gadgets, now, when I don't do well, ooh, he snatched it right there at the surface. Dang old skipjack. Dang old skipjack. Come over here, Skippy. There we go. There's just one to throw in the cooler. He snatched it right there at the dang surface. I saw him. He, he almost scared me come up right there so close. Yeah, Skippy, we're going to throw you in the cooler. Thank you, Skippy. Okay, folks. Species number three, Skipjack. Hold on, I got my, got my cooler strap, strapped down here. All right. Well, let's make another cast or two. Just burn this jig across the surface here. See if we can't trigger another one. I guarantee you that skipjack wasn't alone. They never are. He's going to flop around there in that cooler and scare off all his friends. I'll tell you what, let's do this. I know this will drive you crazy with this braid, but let's uh, let's just circle back here a second, and we'll throw these jigs. Let's see, see if we can't get a few friends of his. I hate for him to be alone in that cooler. Right there. Well, some of you have asked for some skipjack videos, and normally I don't post skipjack videos because, well, they just don't get viewed. The only people who watch are the 10 people in the comment box who request them. But today, I need bait anyway. We clearly own some right here, so let's just make a few more casts. I may not even have to go get that bank spot. I just need me like 10 or 12 for a tournament. That's all I need. I'm gonna take 10 or 12 skipjack and a couple of them frozen suckers all work in. Yeah, like I was saying y'all, I mean, When I could go out and get skunked in a paddle kayak, why do I need $5,000 worth of dang live scope and motor and all that crap? I can paddle around and not catch fish. But it used to just not, it used to not bother me. I'd just say, hey, you know, I'm going kayaking today. And you still get the fun of going kayaking. But when you motoring around, you know, that Hobie kayak, it's not, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's fun catching fish in it, but just going out and enjoying a day, uh, you know, it's not, it ain't like, back when I was paddling, you could just go out and paddle and have a good time kayaking. I can do that in this kayak, just go out and pedal around and enjoy myself. But when you when you when you're in a bigger kayak, it's a lot more stable when and you got a motor on it, it just takes something away from just the I guess the kayaking aspect of it, if you will. Like that part's not as much fun anymore. 
hard to explain, but for me at least it's like that. So when I when I basically when I go out and I'm in that kayak and all the gadgets and I don't catch fish, I just don't feel like it's been a good day. Whereas in a if I was paddling or even being out in this kayak here just paddling, I enjoy the activity even if I'm not catching fish. It probably doesn't make any sense to the average person watching, but thankfully to this point in the video with all the lack of fish and the time it took me to get over here just pedaling, I've probably lost most of the audience anyway, so it don't matter. thought we were gonna really start tearing them up here but they seem to have moved on them skipjack always on the move they're constantly that's one thing kind of knew that anyway but with having live scope on the other kayak, you can kind of see how fish, see how they act. That's one thing I have seen with the skipjack, but they are always on the move. And it ain't just, they're not just on the move like side to side, they're on the move up and down too. I mean, they, they go up in the water column, down the water column, like they're all over the place. So they can, you can be catching them one second and the next they're gone. At least that first skipjack we caught, at least we, we found his best friend to put in there with him. I hope them skipjack ain't claustrophobic like I am. Boy, if they are and they're trapped in that small cooler, that's going to make for a rough time. Maybe that's why skipjack die so quickly. They're not a hardy fish at all. I mean, they... You put them in a small container, a cooler, like they're... They're dead in no time. Maybe it's because they're claustrophobic. Well, I'm gonna get us turned around here. We'll make a few more casts with this skipjack rig and then we'll see if we can't catch some more on the gulp under these docks over here as the construction noise continues. This rig here, in case any of y'all wondering, skipjack rig, this is a Shimano rod. It's a heavy, heavy action rod, bass rod, medium heavy action. Really don't matter for skipjack, you just wanna a stout a stout bass rod medium heavy heavy action that's what you need i think this is six and a half foot or seven seven foot long three thousand size reel and my baits here are crappie magnets one eighth ounce jig heads white and chartreuse crappie magnet plastics on them got two of them tied on i'll show you here in a second that's what they look like right there. They're like, I think they're inch and a half, two inches long plastics. This is pretty much my preferred skipjack setup most of the time. I catch 75, 80% of my skipjack throughout the year on this setup. There are times, usually summer months, I will use a spoon I use them sumo spoons from Catfish Sumo. Um, I'll catch some on those, but usually the jigs is what catches most of my fish. I 
usually are the spoons that swing on the summer months when I'm catching not only skipjack but I'm getting white bass too the white bass are way more likely to hit the spoon than they are the jig so throwing the spoon just helps me get more bait helps me get more more variety you catch white bass on the jigs too but they are far more likely to hit the spoon than they are the the jigs or as the skipjack tend to hit the jigs more frequently than the spoon Well, we got two. That's two less uh, that I don't have to catch when the wind kicks up today. Okay, let's put this up for a minute. Hopefully, there you go, people. For those of you, the 10 of you who requested some skipjack videos, and Lord knows y'all the only 10 who would actually watch them, there you go. back over here throwing the gulp I get my sunglasses out too y'all put the shades on here the sun's getting bright I tell you what I'm enjoying fishing so much more now that we're away from the boats one I don't like talking on camera when there's people around but aside from that, I, hell, I just don't like fishing when people are around. It shouldn't bother me, but it does. I just, oh, we're about to get snagged in that right there. There's some brush right there. I didn't see till we snuck up on. I don't know if that's, I don't know what that is. We about got snagged in. Thankfully, I saw it in time. We don't have to worry about talking in front of these people over here. They can't understand us no way. They're no hobla in gloss. This is something interesting. I can't remember if I've... Maybe I told this story. Did I tell the story? This may be a rerun. Maybe I shouldn't. I was going to tell you about the, the women at the Comfort Inn. I'm pretty sure I told that story about them tearing up the hotel rooms over there and them being upset about it. Well, apparently the foreman or the construction company owners will book rooms at the hotels for their workers that are coming in to do projects. But the people who show up to do the projects don't, they get to, there to check in and they say no English. And so then they don't follow the rules of the hotel. They're smoking in the rooms, they're tearing up stuff, they're, they're not, they're trashing up the place. And then they say no English. Like they don't know they shouldn't be doing that stuff. And uh, housekeepers there, I, I was eavesdropping because that's what I do. If there's somebody talking around me, that's why I don't like talking around people because I know the eavesdropping because I know how I am. If you're having a conversation and I'm just sitting there, I'm going to listen to it. And so I was listening to them. But they were talking about how they wanted to have some rules put in place that whoever books the room whoever's names on the reservation needs to be there and it needs to be somebody that can explain to the other people that there's rules to not trash the place I don't know how them I don't know how them ladies do it being a 
being a housekeeper at the hotels. I mean, I wouldn't want to be cleaning up after people. People are nasty. I mean, I've seen that just working in the ER as long as I did. Just people, just nasty people. I can't imagine going into some of these people's houses. You'd hear the stories from paramedics bringing people in and the filth and the nastiness they had to deal with going into these people's houses and stuff. We had one guy, I was, back when I was much younger and better looking, I was working in Knoxville here before I started traveling. And we had a frequent flyer patient come in. He was in there, gosh, two or three days a week. Always, you know, just frequent flyer. You get a lot of those patients that come in all the time, the ER. It's a lifestyle, really. He was always so nasty, he always stunk. And sometimes you'd you'd find roaches like I remember one time I, I pulled the sheet back when there was a damn roach in the bed little cockroach but uh, I remember the paramedics was just talking about how just the whole place was roach infested like he didn't throw food containers away like it was just just nasty like how do you live like that like, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people with mental health issues, and I ain't trying to make a lot of that. I mean, that's, mental illness is real. It's a real problem. It's an underfunded problem in this country. We, we need more resources and more money going to that kind of thing, but I, I don't care if you got a mental illness or not. You should know, uh, take, you, take your plate, to the sink and wash it when you're done eating. You get a takeout food container, throw it in the garbage. Like that shouldn't be, that, that ain't mental illness. That's just nastiness. Like yeah, that kind of thing, it, it ain't gotta be taught. You don't need medication for it. You just need, you, you just need to do it. Is we live in a society in this culture today where nobody's willing to take responsibility for themselves or their actions. It's just that's where we're at in the world today, and I don't see it getting any better. And uh, it, I've seen it decline. I've seen it deteriorate here in just my lifetime. Now, granted, I've taken 42 trips around the sun now, but just in the last 10 years, seeing how society has deteriorated, I can't imagine what we're looking forward to here in the next 10 years, the next 20 years. I mean, I hope I, I hope I got about 40 more years left in me to live, and I can't imagine the world we're going to live in when I'm elderly. What have I snagged in here? Y'all done got yourself snagged again. That's all you've done today is get snagged. I tell you, don't cast over there, and you cast over there anyway, and you get hung. If I ever get y'all to listen to me, we won't have all these holdups. And if I could get you to spray some WD-40 on them pedals, they wouldn't squeak like that. But you don't do that either. So far, this side over here, I was optimistic about it, but so far it ain't really paid off. There's some bluegill up there on that one bank and a couple skipjack. And we're having hard times out here today, people. But I feel better venting to you about my, well, here's a fish, just like that on cue. What is this? I don't know what this is. We may have a different species here. What the heck? 
Look at this, folks. Boy, you don't see this happen every day. You don't see this. We've got a gizzard shad that has eaten my gulp. <laughs> this has happened one time to me before. He's got, he's got it in the mouth, too. Like shad or plant eaters. But look, I mean, that hook is in the mouth. Old gizzard shad. Guess where you're going, gizzard shad? You're going to Alabama. Throw him in there with the skipjack. You don't see, that's happened to me one time, folks. One time, and I didn't get it on video, and I, so I hadn't said anything about it because I knew nobody would believe me. But sure as the world, it just happened. That dang gizzard shad just ate that gulp. You saw it on the video, unedited, raw and uncut. Got that thing in the mouth. I knew it was a different fish when he hit it, the way he was fighting. And honestly, he wasn't a bad fight on this ultralight. Wouldn't mind catching some more of them. That's happened one time before where I had a shad eat a gulp. I mean, you snag them. Don't get me wrong. You snag them sometimes. Especially if you're running something that's got like a treble hook, like a crankbait or something. But the, the time it happened before, I'd got that fish in the mouth too. So I, that's that's two now. That's I. That's weird, man. I'm glad I got that on video though, because there's nobody to believe it, just like the last time. But in case you were wondering where to net some shad, there's some gizzard shad right over there, apparently. <laughs> They are some pretty good shad in this creek here. I've, when I come net shad, this is a place I oftentimes come. I do better on the other branch over there than, than this side, but there are some good numbers of gizzard shad in this creek. Don't typically get them big, huge gizzard shad, but you'll get some uh, some hand size, you know, of seven, eight, nine inch shad. That nair, by gosh, he made a mistake biting my lure. He's coming to Alabama. We'll throw him on at some point in the tournament. I don't even remember what I was talking about now. Hell, I got so discombobulated by the surprise of seeing that shad. Uh, we're adding that to the species list too, by gosh. That's species number four today. Bluegill, yellow bass, skipjack, and now gizzard shad. Still no crappie though. Ideally, what I would have liked to have done is fish down that one side of the bank on the other creek there. Would have fished past that dock that we, the second dock we were at, went on down, hit them trees that the boat, the guy in the John boat had cut over in front of us. We'd have fished those, went down, hit those other docks, then went over and hit that brush that I tried to fish and didn't do any good on and then made our way around that bank to those other docks where the other boat was at before coming over here. That was kind of the path in my mind that I wanted to follow. But with this many people on the water today, it just wasn't, wasn't happening. But I saw that guy in the John boat catch one crappie off that tree. There was clearly some there, and I got some there off that dock last time. There's a bunch of shad in this little fork of this creek, though. I see them flipping back there and toward the back. These docks just haven't, haven't really panned out, though, have they? 
I'm gonna blame them construction workers over there out beating and banging. Probably scaring the fish off. Geese, boy, it's geese mating season. They're everywhere. They might be the most, aside from humans, humans are the most obnoxious creature on the face of the earth. But the second most obnoxious creature might be geese. Especially geese during mating season. All that squawking and carrying on. much happening today these dogs will keep making their way back like I said I seen I seen more shad flipping back there I still can't believe we caught that shad on a dang gulp I mean I guess it's possible when you think about the just the volume of casts like how many thousands of casts I make per year with this gulp setup. I guess statistically it is possible you make that many casts that maybe possibly you could snag two gizzard shad in the mouth. Like if they didn't eat it, if you did just blind luck bring that bait right by their mouth. Is that possible? Sure, anything's possible. But I'm sticking with them eating it. <laughs> Cause you get crazy catches like that sometimes. Oh, I set the hook in something right there. I set it hard too, it felt like a fish. But I mean like a few months ago, I hooked a buffalo on this. And you know, buffalo is another one that's not really there, there, there it come. Buffalo's another fish that's just going to be more plant eater. But I'd hooked him in the mouth. I got him to eat it. I've hooked a few carp through the years. Another plant eater. I've hooked a few of them on the gulp. I mean, so you you get you get days like that where you you get some odd catches. That's one thing about like this this whole setup here, why I like it so much is because you throw you throw in a one inch gulp, I mean you're imitating the absolute very bottom of the food chain. I mean it don't get any lower than a tiny shad fry, just a, a baby shad. Everything Oh, something, something tapped me. Like, but literally everything will eat them. And so when you're imitating the bottom of the food chain, you're going to get bit. Even a day like today where, I mean, it hasn't been lights out numbers. Like, it's not been a, it's, we're not going to have a 50 fish day by the time I leave here, I don't feel like. But we're still getting bit. We're still catching some fish. So even on a slow day, you're still going to get some bites. Like I can go down to Alabama and get myself skunked catfishing. But I'm not going to get myself skunked with this setup. Now, I may not get as many fish as I want, and I may not get the species I want. There's one. But I'm going to catch something every time I go out with this setup. Oh, look, there's a bass, there's a bass. Oh, he's after him. Look at him, look right there, you see him? Look at him, there's a bass. Is he still there? He's still right there. I hope that's showing up. He's still right there. Look, he's got him, he's got him. Look, we just had that bass eat him. That bass just eat him right there. Oh, oh, oh there he come. There he come. Let's put him back down. 
we have had some crazy stuff happen today, man. Oh, man. Oh, he's back. He's back. He's back. Right here. Look right here. Man, he is after him, buddy. Eat it. Eat it. He's just sitting right there on him, man. I hope y'all can see him. Like, he's right there. Oh, there he went. No, oh, he's still there. Oh, dang. The bluegill come free. Oh, man. <laughs> Was that awesome or what? <laughs> oh, man. The bluegill came free. That We had that bass, though. We had him. He ate him. If I could have got him over here, we could have got the net under him. I wish he could have got wedged in his mouth. He wasn't a very big bass. But, I mean, he, he was after him, buddy. How awesome was that? I hope, I, I hope you could see him under the water there with the camera. I hope the glare wasn't too bad. I mean, he just, even after we, even after he ate him, and he felt the pressure pulling against the line. He still come back again for him. I wouldn't be surprised if he ate him after the bluegill popped off. That's freaking awesome, man. I tell you, man, this, today, like we've not had numbers today, at least not yet. But the gizzard shad, and now that, like, <laughs> I mean, this is going to be a memorable trip regardless. The three of you still watching have just seen a show, man. But that happens a lot. Where you have, you hook a bluegill and bass come after it. Like those fish are down there living just happy-go-lucky together. Everything's cool. Everybody's getting along. You hook a bluegill. He starts swimming erratically. And then bass are like, ding, 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 dinner bell. And they're on it. That's cool. That's cool. Every time that happens, that's cool. That's an adrenaline rush, man. But that's just another one of those things. Like when you're doing this style of fishing, that happens on the on the regular. You see stuff like that, man. It's just a, this is why this is so much fun. It's just one of those things, like. Every time you go out, you catch fish. You don't need any electronics, any special equipment. I mean, I'm out here today in my pedal kayak. We could just as easily be in a paddle kayak. You could just as easily be walking the shoreline and doing this. I mean, you don't need any special equipment. Just ultralight rod, some two pound line, a box of jig heads and some gulp, man. And you're, and you don't even have to use the gulp. Like you can use you can use another plastic. I prefer the gulp. I do I do really good with the gulp. I got a lot of confidence in it. But you could use any plastic, man. Just any small any small bait that represents that bottom of the food chain. You can go out and have a dang good time and catch fish and and experience some craziness like like catching a damn gizzard shad and having a bass that's I mean, he wasn't very big, but he was big enough to get that bluegill in his mouth. That one hit me then. That made my day, y'all. That made my day. The day started out rough, and I'm still ticked off at AT&T for not responding to my text. But that made my day. I'll have to turn that video into a short for my second channel. Because we're, you know, where are we at? Hell, we're over two hours in this video. Nobody's still watching the video at this point. I'll have to go back and clip that part and make a short just so people can see that, that bass eating. And the gizzard shad, too. I'll have to make two shorts out of this video. Thanks, by the way, 
for all of you who've subscribed and watched my second channel there i do the it's kayak catfish highlights is the name of it and i take basically the the people who complain that my videos are too long i kind of cater to those people i guess with that channel because i take clips and shrink them down so if a video is 30 minutes long i'll take the highlights hence the name kite catfish highlights shrink that down to 10 minutes to show the best fish caught on a particular trip and stick it on that channel and so i shouldn't accommodate the complainers but i do and it puts a few extra bones in my pocket too so there's worse things that could happen but thanks to everybody who has watched and subscribed to that i think i'm up to gosh i think i'm at like 92,000 subscribers on that channel now it's pretty crazy it's it's hard to believe i'm gonna switch this gulp out we've had this one on a while it's hard to believe that i have one channel that's got over a hundred thousand people but got another one that's coming up on there i would have never would have never thought that'd be possible if you had talked to me five six years ago and told me where i was going to be right now i'd have told you you're insane you're one of them crazy people with the cockroaches in your in your apartment type people you know you've lost your marbles but here we are just uh just amazing man just absolutely amazing thankful for it too i appreciate it because even though i come out on a thursday morning and, and realize surprise there's five million people on the water today it's still nice the fact that i'm able to come out on thursday morning and do this and so I'm able to do that because y'all, and I appreciate the heck out of you for it. And I hope y'all get some kind of value out of it too. Coming on these trips with me. Even days like today where it's actions limited and we're pretty much just talking about how bad we hate at and um, I hope you get something out of it. I guess some of you do or else you wouldn't keep coming back. It's like, uh, I think it was Dr. Phil I heard one time. Dr. Phil was talking to this woman who had been abused by her husband. and I just threw right over that dang metal right there. Okay, good, we got it back. But Dr. Phil was talking to this abused woman and he was asking her what she got out of the relationship because clearly she was getting something out of it or she wouldn't put up with what was going on. And so I guess it's kind of like that with y'all watching me. It's like, this can't be healthy for you, but you're getting something out of it or you wouldn't keep coming back. <laughs> you know? I like doing these videos though, so much better than the edited ones and it's not just from a time standpoint i mean it is less time consuming obviously since i don't have to edit a video i don't have to spend a lot of time behind the computer but i like just being able to you know i i i feel like it's just more real and i can kind of just whatever i need to vent about for the day or whatever i want to talk about i can do it versus trying to do an edited video where you i mean really you're you're trying to get a point across quickly as you're reeling in a fish or holding up a fish and then you've got to cut and go to the next fish because you, those people who are watching an edited video you've got to keep those people they're expecting action you got to keep them engaged you got to keep the the momentum going on that like you just can't have these 
you can't have a 10 minute break between catching fish. You just can't, you can't keep that audience engaged during that time. They'll click off the video. And I get it, you know, because the people who are clicking on a 15 minute video with a clickbait title there, there's an expectation that goes with that. Whereas these videos, um, I'm not clickbaiting anything as this video will be titled the same thing as all my other ultralight uncut videos. It'll be however many hours we do this raw and uncut ultralight fishing with gulp minnows. Well, however, I title it like there's nothing clickbait about it. It's just, it is what it is. You click on that video, you know, we're going fishing for X number of hours and we're throwing this bait. It just, when you click on it, you know what you're getting. And so the people who do, those of you that do choose to click on these videos and come along on these trips, I, I think it's just kind of understood that it's, you're coming on a real fishing trip. And so I don't, I feel like I can just you know, let the guard down a little bit and just be myself. Just talk about whatever, whatever the mood strikes us and don't have to worry about getting those sound bites in and making the videos as action-packed as possible. I want them to be action-packed. I want to catch fish the whole time. But if it don't happen, if, there's a, if we go through a dry spell and we don't catch a fish for 10, 15 minutes, or you know, even longer than that during the catfish videos, I mean, it's just, it, it just is what it is. So I like doing these videos better. Obviously can't post them all the time. I mean, if I went, and I don't know how many you can post, like back to back days, can you, can you post them multiple times? I don't know. And that's probably something I'll play around with as time goes on is I kind of did that with the live streams a few years ago when the live streams took off. It's like, okay, uh, I did one live stream this week and I had a bunch of people tune in for it. Well, great. Can I do two live streams this week? Okay. Well, I had a bunch of people tune into that. Okay. Can I do live streams back to back days? And it's like, you, you kind of just have to play around with it and figure out what people have time for, what they're willing to watch, how much they're willing to watch. And I don't know. I don't know what that is. So right now I'm just trying to post like one of these unedited videos a week, maybe once every other week. And, and still continuing to put my edited videos in there since that's what that's what my channel is kind of known for but it wouldn't hurt my feelings at all if I eventually got away from doing the edited videos completely I don't think that'll ever be possible I think I'll always have to do that and I, and I wouldn't be shocked at all if these if these unedited videos fizzled out Right now, they're the, my best performing videos on my channel, but I wouldn't be shocked if they just fizzled out and just stopped getting watched, especially as more people do this. Right now, I'm seeing a lot of other YouTubers on there that are, they're posting two, three hour long videos. And so as it becomes more diluted and you're not really standing out uh, amongst the crowd, I don't know that it'll be a long-term sustainable thing for me. But right now, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. And I'm glad there's enough people watching that I'm able to do it and still be able to keep the lights on at the house, you know. But I'm hoping to do it a little bit more easily as we get on into spring and we get some warmer water temperatures. There, there's some, there's one project I'm wanting to do. I, I call it project, like I'm some kind of professional. Uh, there's one thing I'm wanting to do this spring slash summer. There's all kinds of shad flipping back there in the back. We're gonna throw our skipjack rig back there in a minute. 
I guarantee you, you threw a net back there, you'd get a net full. But um, there's one thing I'm going to do coming up, and it's going to be a video series, unedited. But I'm, I, I guess I'm teasing you with it, because I'm not going to talk about it. Because somebody will steal the idea if I do. But I need the water to warm up a little more. But we're going to do a video series with these. And I think it's got potential. I don't know if y'all will like it, but I'm going to like it. <laughs> so I'm hoping if I like doing it, I hope there'll be some of y'all that like watching it. I think it's going to be pretty cool, and it's going to be something that I've been wanting to do anyway. So I'm just going to bring you all with me as we do it. I'm going to make a couple more casts around this dock here, and we're going to throw the skipjack rigs. Back here where all them shad are flipping. I'm telling you folks, people hit me up all the time wanting to know how to catch skipjack. There, there's this misconception. Some people seem to only think you can catch skipjack at the, at the dams in the tailwaters. And yeah, they're up there when they make their spawning run, they move up river and then they get stuck at the dams. And so they're up there in good numbers in the spring. And that's typically where people go and get them very easily. But if you can find you thread fin shad and this time of year, thread fins in the creeks, You find the skipjack's food source, which is threadfin shad, you're going to find the skipjack. So you get on a big concentration of them in the creeks, you're going to have some skipjack there. We get on into summer, then big shad schools move out to the main, main lake, main river channel. You're going to get the skipjack out there. I tell you folks, middle of summer, I'll be catching skipjack just under the surface over 70 feet of water. But you'll see them shad flipping out there and that's where them skipjack will be. They'll be around them. They're always around the thread fins. So, it's a little pro tip for you there. If you don't want to fight the crowds at the dams, just follow the thread fin shad. We're gonna throw a few times. Back here, we're, we're getting back here now where it's dang near dirt shallow. see if there's anything around these shad that are flipping. Maybe gizzards back there flipping, but we know there's some skipjack in here since we caught two a few hundred yards back. Things getting green out here. Allergies going. I've done pretty good with my allergies today. I've been using uh, some Flonase. I sprayed a couple squirts up my nose there before I got in the car this morning. But it's definitely allergy season with everything starting to bloom. I think it's supposed to turn cold here next week though. So by the time you're seeing this video, it's probably back down in the forties and fifties here. It's chilly out here this morning, but it's supposed to be like 60 something this afternoon. Nothing be happening, don't look like. Here's another stupid idea I had. And this may be, this may take the cake for being the dumbest idea ever. But every time I think I'm doing something stupid, it ends up paying off. Like, you know, the first time I posted an unedited video, I thought it was stupid. 
got watched a lot. Then I thought, I'll post the two hour one. Dumb idea, gets watched a lot. Then I went three hours, then four hours. Continued to be blown away. Now when I went over the four hour mark, I ran into some, ran into some problems with that. That's when the views went way down. I can title a video four hours as long as it's like three hours and 50 some odd minutes, it'll get watched. But if it goes over the four hour mark, it just won't get clicked on. It ain't even about necessarily the people watching not liking it. It just don't get clicked on to even get watched. Like the two I've done that have been over four hours long, they, they went over the four hour mark, terrible view counts terrible the live streams that i've done in the past like a lot of my live streams they get a lot of views after the fact like after the live streams over but the ones that have went over four hours in the live streams terrible views afterwards so here's why this idea is maybe the dumbest one ever i've I've seriously considered when I go for these tournaments, these tournaments are eight hours long. I've considered filming the whole thing, posting it. Now, obviously I would still do an edited trip um, from the tournament because those, those videos have done pretty well for me, the edited tournament videos. Seems to be interesting in those. But I've considered just filming all eight hours, start to finish of the tournament, and posting that up as its own video too, in addition to the edited version, so that if anybody, and Lord Almighty, I don't know why anybody would, but if there was anybody out there that wanted to kind of fish the tournament with me, if you will, it would be an option. And again, that may be the dumbest idea I've ever had to post an eight hour long video. I don't even know how long it would take to upload an eight hour video. Like, I, I mean, it, it takes hours now with my crappy internet. I'd probably have to wait until after the utility board hooks up the fiber optic line, whenever that is. I'm supposed to have two and a half gig upload speed Here's fish. Boy, we've had a long drought. But whenever the utility board does get around to coming out there, I'm supposed to have two and a half gig upload speed. So that, that will help me with these big files. But still, you get an eight hour video, man, it's gotta be a huge file. It's gonna take hours and hours and hours to upload. And then would anybody even, I mean, obviously nobody's watching it straight through. It would be broken up over multiple days. But it's one of them things, man, I've considered it. Got snagged and got out of it right there, got lucky. So y'all give me some feedback on that. If anybody's still left watching, if you're still watching to this point in this video, you're the exact type of person I would like to get feedback from on whether or not you would watch an unedited tournament video. Like I've thought about filming some of the bass tournaments unedited because those are, well, like the weeknight tournaments anyway. The weekend tournaments, they're eight hours too, but the there's a local club here in the Knoxville area. Fish is here on Fort Loudon. And they should be starting up soon. I ain't seen no post about it, but they usually start up around April. And they'll fish the evening hours. In years past, it's either been on a Wednesday or Thursday night, but they'll be, it'll be run from like 6 to 9, 6 to 9 p.m. And I've thought about posting some of those unedited 
tournament videos because they'd be three hours long. And these three hour videos have certainly proven that people will watch. But to eight hour, boy, that's a, that's asking a lot of people. Honestly, it's asking a lot of myself. Because to be able to talk for, boy, I made a lousy cast. To be able to talk for eight straight hours. And what the hell do you talk about for eight hours? And then, what happens when I gotta pee? I guess I'd have to turn the camera off for that. I mean, well, I mean, clearly I would. I won't be wrecking no marriages or anything when y'all's girlfriends and wives see what I'm working with compared to what y'all working with. That'd be the end of your marriage. They'd, they'd know for sure you're getting, they're getting shortchanged with you. But yeah, I've considered it. That one hit me right then. But you know, it's just things like that. You know, ideas like that, you just don't know until you try. Hold on, we got a call. We got a call here. Could this be AT&T? It is. All right, y'all privy here. Hello? Hey, this is Alex. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've had a big falling out with AT&T there, so I told them just don't bury it, just come and get it. So that'd be great if you could just go ahead and, and get it out of there. Uh, one more question, Alex. Um, as far as where the line connects into my house, you know, there was a hole drilled there uh, for that. Will that be plugged up or that box left there? How will that work out? The box. Okay. 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 That's why I was concerned about. I don't know if that hole would just be left going into the house there. I wasn't sure if that would be on me or you or whatever. So. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right. Bye. Well, that went better than expected, folks. I had big concerns of what was going to happen with that hole going from my living room to the outside. Because you can't just leave a hole in your house. It'd be ants and bugs and everything else in there. And I'm hoping whenever utility board does show up, I'm hoping they'll just use that same box. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we got Animal Planet going on over here. I don't know if they're fighting or fornicating. Could go either way, could be both. Yeah, well that went, that went better than expected. I probably made Alex's day there too because now he's gonna just come and roll up that line. He don't have to dig nothing. I should have asked him though, and y'all let me forget. I should have asked him if that was him out there yesterday spray painting my yard. For, I completely forgot about that. I was kind of, I was on guard because I thought it, it might be an issue there that I was going to have to raise my voice and maybe say some obscenities but it didn't turn out to be that way but i forgot i guess we'll find out i don't know when they'll be there or how long it'll take i may be home by the time they by the time they get there oh no oh. them geese boy they're fighting again Now we gotta listen to them. The old geese over there, goosey and honkers. 
One of them's upset that the other one's getting a woman that he ain't getting. Sounds like a typical Friday night at the local local alcohol establishments around here. Well, they just ain't been nothing hardly down this little creek here, has they? I guess that's why all the boats is on the other side. That's where all the fish are at. We've had a hard time getting fish in here today. This has been a... We've had two cool experiences with the gizzard shad and the bass, but it has been tough fishing otherwise. kind of want to I kind of want to troll my way out of here let's throw these skipjack rigs behind us to make our way out I'm inclined to believe we'll probably get some fish doing that we'll make a few more casts through here and we might we might troll maybe we'll troll out of here go back down the other branch see if all them boats are still in there maybe some of them have moved on and we can oh here's something maybe we'll make a few more casts right here now since we just got bit this is a little better fish whatever he is boy i mean he's a oh that's a big bluegill that's a that's a biggest bluegill of the morning right here I'd measure this one, except I forgot the measuring board. I remembered the dang net, left the measuring board in the car. That one there, I guarantee he's eight inches though. That's a nice one right there. That makes me happy, folks. Let's go back over there. This is another area here, real rocky. Been getting a lot of sun this morning. It seems like every time we've caught a bluegill today, we ain't followed it up with much. It's like it's just been one here, one there type thing. We're not really been on a, not really been on a school of them. Now we may have been on some schools of them. They just hesitant to bite for whatever reason. Like I was telling you before, though, with this, this type of setup you ain't getting skunked if there's fish there you're gonna catch some of them i don't know how many fish we're up to today i'm sure if fishing key largo watches this he'll he'll tell us he keeps track of all the casts and here's one he keeps track of the cast number of fish caught species he does all that stuff for us But I'll tell you this, we ain't got as many as what I've wanted to today. But we've still got some. That's another better size bluegill right there. He's got our gulp tore up too, don't he? Let's flip this gulp upside down. We'll make another cast over there. Maybe we're on some fish here. I say this in all these videos, but you put this gulp on, you want it on there straight so that it falls down and kind of like a, like that kind of motion. If it's crooked, you'll helicopter. And if fish are real active, they'll hit that, that bait as it helicopters down. But you'll catch a lot more if it's, if it's straight. Most of them fish are gonna come on the fall as that thing falls down. fish this area a little bit more thoroughly now that I know there's some good quality bluegill here. It makes me excited, folks. I like catching big bluegill. They're one of my favorite fish to catch. I know they're 
they're considered kind of a kid's fish, if you will, a beginner fish, because they're most people's first fish they ever catch is a bluegill. And because of that, I don't feel like they get the respect they deserve, but pound for pound, man, they're a hard fighting fish. I think they're cool. Especially when you get them big ones that are eight plus inches. And I'll go down there to Florida. I fished Lake Ida a few times down there in South Florida. And it's one of those canal lakes there. Oh, I set the hook hard in that. It's a dang piece of brush. Since the geese go crazy again. Oh, come on, come out of that. There it comes. But uh, I've went down there to Lake Ida a few times and they've got them big old copper nose or copper nose bluegill down there. And them things, they're just, they're a, a, a species of bluegill, a breed of bluegill that just gets bigger. Like you go down there and you catch the, them copper nose. Here, you get a northern strain bluegill. A big one's going to be eight inches. Like eight, to, if you find a 10 inch northern bluegill, like you've, you've done something. Like that's, I think it's 10 inches to qualify for our Tennessee Angler Recognition Program on bluegill. It's a 10 inches, you just don't catch them. I don't catch them anyway, not on public water very often. But you get on them copper nose bluegill and those, I mean, the smallest one you're gonna catch is about eight inches and they're thick too and they fight hard. And they look cool, they look like a daggone zombie fish, the color patterns on them oftentimes. Like those are cool fish. That's one of my favorite things. And, and people think I'm crazy when I talk about driving 12, 13 hours down to South Florida and get excited about catching bluegill when there's a million other species down there to fish for. But I, I do, I enjoy the heck out of it. I look forward to that. So they got them peacock bass down there and them canal legs too. And I like catching them and the and the clown knife fish and the other exotics, but if you told me I was going to South Florida and I was only going to catch the copper nose bluegill, I'd still be excited to go because I like them that much. Me and Daniel from Catfish Sumo had talked recently about going to South Florida. He was going on vacation down there with his wife and the talk was instead of him flying back home with her he would stay i'd just go pick him up down there and bring his kayak down and him and i would go down to the keys and try to get on some sharks but unfortunately the the when he went down there the wind forecast was just it was brutal we weren't going to be able to go offshore at all because of the the winds are just going to be too much so we didn't end up doing that apparently the wind doesn't just blow hard here <laughs> this time of year apparently it's all across the, the country but i'm definitely going to try to go back this fall or winter down there if i can and try to catch some more sharks and honestly i had a good time i i filmed a little bit of it but just throwing a ultralight along the bridges down there in the keys i mean you catch a ton of fish doing that all kinds of species various types of snapper a bunch of other fish i have no idea even what they were i mean just it's a good time i mean you're getting bit almost every cast because those bridges are just loaded with life i mean there's just so many so many fish down there I could, I mean, I could make a good time doing that if it, if it, if you didn't just have sharks right there, just so close away, you know, and just calling my name, I'd spend more time ultralight fishing out there in the ocean. But 
Well, I thought for sure we were gonna, we got them other two bluegill right there. I thought for sure we were about to get on them. Right here, but if they're here, they ain't, they ain't wanting nothing to do with us. They said you got nose hair coming out your nose or something. And they don't want to fool with you today. Speaking of nose hair, this is embarrassing. I was trimming my nose hair the other day. Because, I mean, you got to. If you want a woman to be attracted to you, fellas, you need to trim your nose hair. But anyway, I was trimming mine and I cut it a little close. And I nicked my my nose hair trimmer nicked my nose like the inside and apparently the skin inside your nose there apparently it's just super sensitive because that thing bled and bled and bled and kept bleeding i didn't think i was ever gonna get stopped i was like hell i think i'm gonna need to go get my platelets checked or something because here yeah, this thing just won't quit bleeding I mean, it bled forever because I nicked my dang nose while I was cutting my nose hair. Like, you can't make this stuff up, people. <laughs> it reminds me, too, next time I go to the store, I need to get me some AA batteries because my nose hair trimmer is starting to... You can tell the battery's getting low with the way it's cutting. Y'all, y'all remind me next time I go, I got to get batteries. Send me a message or something there. Shoot me a text. When you, when you see me leave for the store, just remind me. I went yesterday evening and went to Aldi and got me some, got me some more steaks and some vegetables and I might have got a container of them chocolate covered donuts they sell too. They're pretty good. I did fight the urge though. When I went to Alabama a few days ago, there's a Bucky's that's on the way. And I always stop at Bucky's because it's just convenient, man. They got a million bathrooms. And you can get gas and get you something to eat. And normally when I go, I'll get me a Texas cheesesteak burrito because they're really good. Overpriced, but they're good. And I'll get me some chocolate covered almonds. And I did, when I stopped in there, I did get the burrito. But I showed some, I showed some, um, discipline and i held off on the chocolate covered almonds this time you know, i'm trying to trying to watch my girlish figure and all and so i held off i've been doing better i've been cutting back on the pepsi I'm trying not to eat as many sweets although i did buy that container of chocolate covered donuts at the aldi last night but uh yeah as i've gotten as I've taken more trips around the sun, especially after about the fifth time I've turned 30 to, to now the 12th time I've turned 30, it don't seem like the metabolism works as well as it used to. So you gotta be a little bit more, you gotta be a little bit more disciplined on your eating habits. Part of it too is just now last few years that I've spent most of my fishing time in the kayaks with motors on them I'm not getting as much exercise just naturally about my day like when I was pedaling all the time or paddling you're using you're using physical energy you're exerting yourself just getting spot to spot and so if I was fishing 
few days a week hell i might put on 20 miles if i was out if i was having to go a long ways for skipjack hell i might do 50 miles or more in a week and be physically exerting myself whether it was paddling back in the day or using the pedals and so you're getting your exercise in every time you go fishing but since i've been using the motor more the last few years i'm not getting that that exercise and so between that and the metabolism changes in your life you just start to pack on an extra pound or two working on that dad bod you know i'm at that age now where at 42 them 20 year old girls with the daddy complex are starting to be interested in me and i guess my body's realizing that and it's putting on the pounds so that i can not only be the age of the guy with the dad bod but actually have the dad bod too so yeah it's a blessing and a curse i guess I think that was Skipjack over beside us on the right. It just come up. We're gonna we're gonna troll out our way out of here. I'm gonna fish down here just a little bit further. I ain't gonna get too close to these guys with the construction work going on, but we'll make a few more casts through here and then we're gonna throw out them skipjack rigs behind us and at least troll back over to the other side and see if there's a million people over there and we may hit a couple docks with the ultralight here and just if there ain't people over there places we couldn't hit before of course as many boats has been through over there they've been fishing done seen a million lures today and i really and since we've been down in, in this part where I can see out there to the main channel, I haven't seen a lot of boats go up and down. It seems like there's 10 people on the water today and nine of us are in here in this damn creek. It's a nice day right now though. The wind is supposed to be bad. It ain't kicked up yet, but it's supposed to be bad today. But right now it's nice man i like it when you can get this time of year and you can start fishing at dawn again and not freezing your cojones off so it's the best time of year come out first thing get my fishing done have the afternoons for hang out play with daphne the dog she's still at the grandparents by the way so i went she was staying there while i was in alabama and since i was just coming home for a couple days there wasn't no point in her coming back to my house and then me having to run back down there to their house tomorrow to drop her back off so she's just staying with them i'm gonna pick her up on sunday because i'll get back i'll probably get back around 11 or midnight on saturday night after the tournament because the tournament ends our check-ins there at four and i'll send around there and bs with the guys for a while and i'm sure i've i've mentioned it on previous videos where i was going to be so there'll probably be a, um, some youtube viewers show up there There's usually usually a few people that show up when i announce it and i'll hang out with them and do stuff and then um course got a four hour drive back and the time change alabama's on central time and so we'll flash forward an hour on my drive back so it'll be later it'd be 11 or midnight probably when i get back so i'll just get her on sunday there them alabama people i was, I was telling a the guy there when I was down there, I said, it's bad enough you Alabama people are behind us intellectually, but makes it even worse when you're behind us on the clock, too. And we got to go back in time an hour to fish down there. 
I can't imagine living in Central Time. Like I worked in Central Time quite a bit in my travel nursing days. But to live in it full time, like it's the worst time zone. Cause you have to do all the conversions. TV shows. If you're watching a TV show or a sporting event, all the times are always listed in Eastern or Pacific time. It's 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. That's what you always hear and see. If you're in Central Time or Mountain Time, you got to do all these conversions. You got to do math just to figure out what time ball game comes on. And I think Central Time's worse than Mountain Time because at least in Mountain Time, I mean, in theory, you got mountains, right? I mean, at least you, you've got better scenery. So, yeah, you know me, I can't resist taking a shot or two at the Alabama people whenever I can. They've whooped our hind ends in football for practically my whole life. So I take any opportunity I can to take a swap at those people. Here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna stand up, man, and I'm gonna stretch my legs. We're gonna make some casts over here along this bank with the skipjack rigs. And then we're gonna start trolling our way back over there to the other side and see. See what we can catch along the way and see how many boats are sitting over there where we started fishing. And then, even though the wind hasn't kicked up yet, we may go ahead and wrap it up so I can go and work on getting some bait and then I can get my other kayak washed because it is nasty. I ain't washed it in months. It stinks. And I feel like if I'm going to be doing a public appearance here, with this tournament, people showing up to see me and stuff at the tournament check-in, I ought to at least have a clean kayak. So I'm going to wash it today. Wash it today, then it'll get rained on tomorrow and get all that road dirt and stuff traveling. That kayak ain't been washed over months. I mean, it's got dirt on top of dirt on top of dirt. I got all that grease and oil for my trolling motor messed up last month. It's all over the front hatch, so I need to give it a good, a good scrub down. This one here is so much easier to clean. The texture of the plastic on this one, in this Old Town kayak, is smooth. So you can take a hose to it and a sponge and you can have this thing here cleaned in five minutes. I mean, it don't take any time at all. But my Hobie kayak's got like a, I don't even know what you call it, like roto molded, I guess, texture to it. Like it's like a rough texture. And you can't just take a sponge to it. Like you gotta, you gotta put some elbow grease into it. That's the biggest reason why I don't wash it more often, just because it's so much, it's so much trouble to do it. All right, let's see if we can squeak these pedals some more here. The part that squeaks is right there. This, that part that spins. I gotta get some WD-40 and put on there. We're going to spin around here. We're going to throw these skipjack rigs off the back and troll our way back. We might pick us off a few. So for those of you interested in catching skipjack, want to know how I do it, this is oftentimes a way. The place I'm gonna go when I leave here off the bank, I'll be casting obviously. But when you're in these creeks, and you know skipjack are on the move they're swimming around they're there 
an easy way to catch them is trolling for them. You will you will work very efficiently doing this because one, you can have multiple lines out while you do it. And two, you can kind of go to the fish versus just waiting on them to pass by you. So yeah, we'll just troll up through here and just slow troll. Don't have a graph, so I can't tell you the speed, but we're just gonna try to casual pace, try to keep it around two, two and a half miles an hour. Somewhere in there. It's not an exact science. Most important thing is just getting in front of their face. Skipjack are very aggressive when they're feeding, so that's the most important thing. You want to match the size of the bait that you're throwing to whatever they're eating. And again, most of the time they're eating threadfin shad. That's 99% of their diet is threadfin shad, so you want to match the size of those. You want to try to get close to the color. A white, a white and chartreuse like I'm throwing. Um, sometimes they like pink too, white and pink, a silver, you know, any kind of, any, anything shad colored, anything that resembles that, you'll catch them. But size and getting it in their face, that's going to help you. But, you know, when you're casting, it's kind of an inefficient process because you cast your bait out you reel it in you've got those couple seconds there when your bait's out of the water you're rearing back you cast it's flying through the air and it hits the water and then you start your retreat when you think about how many casts you make in a day and you take that couple seconds there that it takes you to follow through the casting motion Multiply that out by how many casts you take, and that's a lot of time without your bait in the water. And so when you're trolling, you eliminate that. Your bait's in the water the whole time. And in my case here in the kayak, I can run two rods while I do this. If you're in a boat, especially if you're in a large boat, you can run multiple lines. And so it's just more efficient. It's, it's a more it's just a more productive way to fish for them in my opinion especially when you're in a situation like this where you're in a creek and fish could be here comes the wind just right now just it just hit but when you're in a creek like this and you know them skipjack are here but you don't know necessarily where at a given moment this is just a a more efficient way in my opinion and if you're going to fish out of a kayak because of the limitations of the kayak the speed limited number of lines you can have out I mean anything you can do to make yourself more efficient it's just going to help you catch more fish in the long run Them, them construction workers over there holler. I don't know what they're saying. They could be yelling at me. I wouldn't know. You'd think all the time I spent in the ER, my Spanish would have gotten better, but it hasn't. I was fortunate. Most of the places I worked at, travel nursing, that had a large Hispanic population, we had, we had translators. Or interpreters, as they like to be called can't call them translators. It's like calling a weatherman a weatherman. You're supposed to call him meteorologist the same way with the translators. You can't call him a translator. You got to call him an interpreter. Everybody's all technical. I answer pretty much anything, especially if it's vulgar, because then I know you're probably talking to me. Jason's probably the most common thing I get called. Are you that Jason guy with the catfish kayak channel?
I don't know why old people always want to call people named Justin Jason. I don't know why it is. It's always been like that. Even before my YouTube days, I'd have old people call me Jason. I seen a woman the other day at the store. I rounded the corner and was walking down the aisle and she had this look of bewilderment on her face, like, like just this look of shock. And I was like, man, have I got a, a booger hanging out my nose or something? Like, here's fish, old Skippy. But this woman, I, I walked past her and she's like, hey, hey, hey. Are you that guy from YouTube? I guess I just shocked the heck out of her or something. But I thought for sure I had a booger hanging out my nose. When I first walked past her, when I saw the look on her face. Come on in, Skippy. Well, there's another one I don't have to catch here in a little while. hook out the net. I shouldn't have netted him. I should have just boat lifted him. But we got him nonetheless. That's a pretty good sized one. I caught one the other day that was huge. I should have weighted. I don't weigh fish. I think weighing fish is stupid, but that particular skipjack was probably close to the record. Um, Mark Cooper the YouTube channel Top Knox Fishing he actually has the world record skipjack I think he called it at the Kingston Steam Plant I think is where he got it at but it's four pounds and I think four pounds and some odd ounces and boy I caught one the other day that was well over three pounds for sure I should have I should have weighed that thing but a regular viewer saw that at the end of the Alabama most recent Alabama video which should have been posted by the time you're seeing this I cut that thing up didn't catch a daggone thing with it we'll circle back through here a minute we know there's some skipjack in this area because we caught them two over there in the other pocket and then we just got this one now we just, oh, we only had one hit that right then. <clears throat> but hopefully this will help some of you. Now I know there's some locals that will watch this. And you'll come out here and you'll pound this specific area. Because you just saw me catch some skipjack here. And you can certainly do that. But this, what's going on here, how I'm catching these fish in this creek, it's not isolated. You can do this in every one of these creeks down through here. Now, I, I'm fishing here today because it's close to the house and I thought I might have to go home today and deal with AT&T. Fortunately, old Alex seems to have his doo-doo together and sounds like we're on the same page with him coming to get in the line and not burying it in the ground and not leaving a hole in the side of my house, so. But, I'm here because it's very convenient for me to get here. But I could have just as easily done this in any one of these creeks out here today. And you can too. It's all about following them thread fin. Right now, they in the backwaters. And them skipjack. They're going to want to do their spawning here pretty soon, about another month they're going to start spawning so then they're going to leave these creeks and they're going to go up river and so if you're fishing a reservoir that's got a dam they're going to get stuck at those dams and that's when people's going to be wearing them out there in the tailwaters after the spawning's done they start moving back down river and typically during them summer months you start seeing shad out on the main lake oftentimes they'll you go out in the mornings and they'll be just the middle of the damn lake they'll be they'll be shad out there flipping and whatnot here's just one other one we may end up getting uh, he spit it 
We may end up getting all our skipjack here. I might not even have to go hit that bank spot. But in the summer, like I said, you'll see them shad out there. Middle of the damn lake. And you can go out there and catch them in the, in the skipjack in the middle of the dang lake. And here's one thing that does change in the summer months. When you have a shad spawn and those skipjack are feeding on those tiny shad fry, they're about the size of a gulp minnow. I mean, they're just tiny baby shad fry. When you have that going on, when that's the size of the bait that they're keyed in on, you won't hardly be able to catch them on these crappie magnets that I'm using today. The size of the baits is too big. They're, they're keyed in on a smaller size. So in that situation, I will oftentimes downsize my hooks and I will put on trout magnets which same style split tail plastic just like the crappie magnets but they're significantly smaller i think they're one inch long and the diameter is much smaller they're, they're much more they match the size of those shad fry significantly better you throw those out there and those skipjack will eat those but it's about matching the size now you can throw the gulp on in that situation too and catch them but the gulp is a very soft plastic and them skipjack, uh, you just, you tear up them gulp very easily with the skipjack. So that's why I use the more durable plastic in the trout magnets. But you'll catch them there in the summertime. Then once you start getting into fall, those fish start moving back into the backwaters and you start catching them in the creeks again. And you'll catch them in the creeks all the way up from fall winter up until about late march early april when they start to do their spawning run again and then they run back up river so you don't have to just catch them at the dam is what i'm getting at if, if you're looking for skipjack and you're having a hard time now and people will come out and fish these creeks and be like oh well you know nothing's there because they don't see them busting skipjack or just because you don't necessarily see them busting the surface doesn't mean they're not there they could be right under the surface they could be feeding a little lower down in the water column but they'll still be there if you got thread fins you got skipjack we're gonna make one more loop through here we're gonna loop around over there where we caught them first two and circle back around and we got that we got that one there and we hooked another one that spit it so there's some in here in this area and i've seen some enough shad flipping that i think there's some more but like i said i ain't too worried about it we're gonna we catch some here great if not i'll swing by that bank spot on the way home and catch a few i know i've been wearing them out there I ain't gonna bring the camera out for that part though, because I don't wanna, I don't mind people seeing this area here on video, me catching fish, because whoop de doo if people come out and fish it. But if it's a bank spot and you got about enough space for one or two people to stand and cast, if I burn those spots on video, well then I just, I cut my own throat in that situation. Because then I'm gonna show up to try to catch bait there and I'm not gonna have a spot because there's gonna be a herd of people there because they've seen it on video. But places like this where I'm out on open water here and these skipjack could be anywhere up in here, ain't a big deal. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm just bringing y'all with me here along for the wrapping this video up. Oh, there was another one that hit. So, anyway, we may make a few more casts when we get over there back to the other side. If there ain't a bunch of boats and if uh, 
the wind is kicking up. It's, I don't know if you can tell on camera or not, but it's starting to pick up a little bit. If it's not bad and we get back over there, we may make a few more casts with the gulp. more shad flipping <clears throat> I've had a few people in these ultralight videos I've done it was a few months ago it was back in the summer I guess last summer I had done a actually I think it was the first ultralight unedited video I did that was over three hours but uh, I think the last hour or so of that trip I had done some trolling to catch some bait and I had some people say they enjoyed that and come along with me for the trolling portion. And so we'll do it again here right now. Those of you that like it, the two of you left watching, if you like this, well, come along with me. And if you don't, well, you've already clicked off the video anyway. Again, this is just me going fishing today. This is what I'd be doing whether the camera was rolling or not because I wanted to go ultralight fishing today and I needed to catch some bait today. I'd rather catch it tomorrow before I drive down for the tournament on Saturday, but if it's pouring down rain and storming tomorrow, it's better just go ahead and get them today. Catch me about 10 or 12 skipjack. We'll take a couple of them frozen suckers all working. We got that gizzard chad that we caught today. It was, I swear I think he ate that that gulp man i know there'll be people in the comment box that'll say i just snagged him in the mouth just and, and maybe i did i mean statistically speaking it's certainly possible you make enough cast something something like that can happen but either way we got us a gizzard shad to take down there i'll work him in to some point i could have brought a net and netted us some shad but i just didn't i really want to use skipjack down there as my primary bait and i think the sucker if i had fresh suckers that would probably be the the better play but i just can't go out and get suckers on a regular basis it's it's just pure luck to get them things in a net. I can't specifically do it. I think it's about time to start doing some carp fishing again too. I saw some yesterday. They were up kind of shallow, so I'm thinking it's about time to, to get after them again. That's another thing I've been wanting to do. I'm just so bad at it. And I've been behind on content lately as far as the catfish videos go. It's hard for me to spend a lot of time doing other styles of fishing because I'm just trying to get that catfish content. The one good thing about uh, ultralight fishing, well, there's a lot of good things. I don't say one good thing. There's a lot of good things about it. I love doing this. But most of the time, if I come out with the intention of filming an ultralight video, I get an ultralight video. Just because you, you always, I mean, you have days like today, sure, where you don't, where you don't catch as many as you'd like, but you're still going to catch some. I've only, I'm trying to think about it now, I know there's been, last fall I went down to Del Hollow. So I've been talking about it forever and I went down there doing an ultralight trip and I caught a few fish but like I, I, I didn't catch enough to post a video like I, I, I caught a handful of fish none of them were very big so I couldn't justify posting that video 
And then there was another day I went to Chilhowie. The first time I went to Chilhowie on ultralight video, I caught a, I caught several bass, smallmouth bass, and I posted that video. And I'd made a decision I was going to go back and throw the three-inch gulp the next time and try to just specifically target bass. And so I did. A couple months later, I went back. And I, again, I, I didn't catch enough to justify posting the video. So that was another trip that was kind of didn't work out. And then there was one other day where I got on the water and I, I had left the house with the intention to film. But I got over there and I was like, yeah, I'm just not in the dang mood to fiddle with a camera today. So I just went fishing instead. But most of the time, though, I leave the house to go do an ultralight video. I'm going to catch enough fish to make the video. Now, the catfishing, on the other hand, is kind of, especially lately, it's been hit or miss for me. I'm either going to be really on some fish, or I ain't going to catch a daggone thing. Alabama trips have been a perfect example of that. I go out one day and I catch fish, and I think, okay. And then my next day is going to be even better. <laughs> you don't get nothing. It's just demoralizing. Especially when I'm in the other kayak and got all them gadgets. I'm like, why do I have all the stuff if it doesn't help me catch a fish? I can go out in the paddle kayak and cast baits at random and not catch fish. I don't need $5,000 in gadgets to, to get skunked. We're just gonna keep going this time, work our way back down in this other fork of this creek here. And that's where I'd been getting when I've skipjack fished out here recently. This is where the bulk of the fish has come from in this other branch of this creek back toward that bridge as it gets shallower. So we'll see what's going on back there as we make our way back and we'll see what the wind's doing back there when we get back there and how many people's around and we'll either wrap it up or we'll make a few more casts we'll see where are we at on well hell we're at three hours and 22 minutes we're gonna have to wrap this up soon because i can't go over the four hour mark and expect to get any clicks on this video but i'm gonna do these videos i do want you I do want people to actually click on it and watch. We got another one here. There may be two of them actually. Let's see if we can keep them both on. Sometimes you hook two, you end up with none. <laughs> now we done lost one of them. Nope, no, we didn't either. Let's see if we can get them both in on there. Oh, oh. Get in here, Skippy. Get down the floor of this kayak. Or you can flop off there. All right, folks. So there's just two more. What is that? Did one of them just take a crap right there on my pedal drive handle? Which one of you has done that? These fish need a bidet. I'm telling you, Comfort Inn needs to call me. Hotel consultation. It's my next calling in life when this YouTube thing fails for me. I'm gonna be a hotel consultant. Nice, all right, there's two more. Yeah, let's see what we can't do here. What do I got going on over here with this rod? Let's reel this thing. I don't know. I got another fish or am I hung on something? I got hung on something while I was fighting that other fish. Well, I guess we'll circle back and get this thing unhung. Nice. I like catching them two at a time. Oftentimes you hook multiple skipjack like that. They end up pulling against each other and you don't land a single one of them. hung in here. 
I guess we went backwards while we was fighting that fish, or them fish. Yeah. Well, let's just circle around and hit it one more time, what do you say? And then we'll make our way back in the, in the creek there. I could probably troll out here another hour and get what I need. How many do we have in the cooler right now? Two, four. Five in there, I guess. Yeah, I really only need like five to seven more. Could probably just find them here and not, not even stop at the bank spot on the way home. See some skipjack. Or some shad, I should say. Flip it right down. Let's make a few cast right here. Shad are really flipping right there. Make one or two more casts and we get back on the troll. Y'all listen to the y'all listen to the conversation going on over here. It'd be like getting a Rosetta Stone or something. He can get you a Spanish lesson over here today. They talk so fast, like, I needed to be slow to even have a chance at picking out the different words. Like, it's just, I feel like if you're gonna learn a language, another language, you need to do it as a kid. Once you get to being an adult, you just can't, it's harder, I think, as an adult. Plus, I just don't have the desire to learn. I needed to learn Spanish. When I was working as a nurse, it would have made life so much easier to not need a translator all the time or an interpreter all the time. But I'm at a point in life now where it's like I don't, I don't really need to, I don't really need to speak Spanish. It'd be nice to understand it sometimes when they're hollering at me and know what they're saying but I just don't have the motivation to try to learn all them shad's been flipping right here but I don't always see nothing I don't always see nothing going on around it I'm not catching anything right here making casts so we'll get on the move here and cast them out behind us and Get back after it. I'm just making a cast length here. Nothing, no, nothing special as far as certain distance of line I'm putting out or anything. People always ask that. How far are you running your baits? I don't. Nothing special. Just throwing out a cast. We ain't gonna be doing this much longer. I just noticed my battery life is down to 36%. So we apparently wrapping this video up. I guess my battery pack has died and now we're on the main camera battery. So we only got a few more minutes of this trip left anyway, y'all. Apparently, for filming purposes. <laughs> I do have my other battery pack and batteries with me but with us being three and a half hours into this already no point in switching all that over we'll just film here until the battery dies in the next few minutes and we'll call it a video hopefully you have enjoyed it a few fish that we've caught 
we've seen more people than fish today, but we've had a couple cool experiences, especially that bass. I hope that bass showed up. I know we saw it when he ate the bluegill, but I'm hoping y'all could see him under the water there. Cause I mean, he just kept coming up to that bluegill, just kept coming up to him and we'll just sit there and look at him. That was pretty cool. I love it when that happens. It, it happens, it happens quite a bit. I mean, it's pretty frequently that you'll have bass come after the bluegill. And I had that one video, I think it was last, last fall, into summer fall, I can't remember. But I had a muskie. I was fishing the Emory River and I had a muskie come after a bluegill that I was reeling in. And that was pretty cool too. That was the first time that had happened. Bass are pretty frequent. But that was the first time a muskie had come after my bait or fish that I was reeling in. I've only caught one muskie in my life. I was fishing with Corey Allen. He used to be a, a guide here in Tennessee. I, he moved somewhere. I don't know where he went. But he was a really good musky fisherman. And he, I was fishing with him one day. And we were throwing whopper ploppers, bass lures, and caught a musky. Some more of them old geese over there. Them things, man, I'm telling you, they need to they need to open up hunting season year round on them things. The only thing more obnoxious than a goose is a human being. wonder if Alex is at my house yet, taking up that line. I'm gonna look up the security camera here when we're done filming and see if they're there. I really wanna know who and why they spray painted them letters in my yard. The location of the letters just, that's what didn't make any sense. Like it just didn't, it was completely away from anywhere they would be running any lines, either company. Common sense and logic would say it was probably AT&T since they were clearly coming today. But it was on the other side of the driveway up by my shed, like it was a long ways away from their line, like it just didn't make sense. And the utility board, like they wouldn't be they wouldn't be running their lines over there either. And TVA, if it's something to do with the power lines, they've always been good in the past about leaving a note on the door. So I don't have a clue. Hell, it could have been just some random weirdo spray painting my yard. I mean, this day and time, you never know. Weirdos everywhere doing stupid stuff all the time. So I got them security cameras up that way. I can see what's going on there. It's got the motion detectors and it sends you a, a notification on your phone. And you can click on it and you can talk to people through it and you can record. And so all the valuable stuff, because I got quite a bit of stuff that's outside at my house between the kayaks and my fancy lawnmower I got last year, which I'm really excited about getting ready to, to use that coming up. I don't want to mow this soon. Even though I could make my neighbor mowed. He mowed last week. But I don't like mowing this soon. It seems too, too early in the year. I don't feel like you should mow in March. But I'm excited about using that mower nonetheless because it's it's awesome. I got a, I know I talked about this on videos last fall when I got it, but if you're new to the channel, I got a Skag Patriot zero turn uh, commercial grade mower. I had been using, I've got three acres that I mow and I'd been using a John Deere riding lawn mower for the last 
10 years, I guess. And it had about had it. And so I wanted a zero turn just so I could make quicker work of my, my yard. And boy, that thing, man, I got it last fall. I got it, I bought it at the end of season sales. So I could save a little money. Cause it's a pretty expensive mower, especially when you go commercial grade, but my yard is so dang bumpy. You need a commercial grade frame to, to last. Cause my John Deere, man, I had replaced just about everything on it at some point in time in the last 10 years. And then it was, everything was needing to be replaced again. So, I wanted a commercial grade mower and I got a deal on this one. But it's awesome. It cut my, it used to take me about, about three hours or so to mow. And with this, with the Skag Zero Turn, it's about hour and a half. And I think as I get better at using it and and can steer it and, and go faster speeds more comfortably. And once I, you know, once you get used to it, it's a learning curve, learn how to drive one of things. But once I get better at it, I may even cut my time down some more on how long it takes me to mow. And I like mowing. It's not that I'm trying to just avoid mowing altogether. Like I genuinely enjoy mowing my yard. I'm one of those weirdos but I don't necessarily want to do it for three hours. There's another fish. We got another John boat coming in here behind us. Oh, Skippy. You wanna be netted or you wanna be boat flipped in, Skippy? He says boat flip me, Justin. That's what it did too, I aimed to please. Calm it down, Skippy. We're running out of battery here. We ain't got time for this nonsense. Well, you done hooked yourself in the head again, Skippy. All right, there's six. Yeah, folks, even after the battery dies, I'm just gonna work this creek a little more and get what I need. No sense in making a trip over to that other bank spot. And I only need six more and there's clearly enough in here to get what I need. Where are we at on battery? 25%. We get down under 10%, I'll tell you it's by because even though that battery may say 10%, it clearly it never means 10% because it usually shuts off. <laughs> I had a problem with the last unedited video that I filmed where my dang battery pack wasn't, like it wasn't working. Like it was charged and it wasn't working. I ended up, ended up having to turn the camera off, turn it back on, and then my battery pack worked. So it worked fine today. No issues, but we've, we've run out of juice to this point. I was filming this in 4K. I don't know if I'll get to upload it in 4K. It just depends on if the utility board gets my fancy internet hooked up before I upload this. But I'd ideally like to be able to do these unedited videos in 4K for those of you that's got the means to watch it at the higher definition but it does run down the battery life a little quicker than filming in 1080. I wish GoPro, they make battery packs that all different sizes, but most of them aren't compatible with GoPro or they don't work properly. So GoPro kind of forces you into using their battery packs, the, the Volta they call it. And it's been fine for the most part. They're overpriced, but I wish they were, I wish they were bigger. Like I wish they had more life. Hell. I 
guess they're falling in right behind us over here. Here comes another kayak. Another one behind him and another one. Good God, all the people today on a Thursday. Thursday morning at the crack of dawn. drink nothing this whole video I dehydrate myself I think we're away from the people now. Got the Tennessee Yacht Club coming through on their kayaks. Had a John boat come in right behind us. There's been too many dang people out here today. On a Thursday morning. Well, the wind looks like it's blowing harder over here. Once we come around this bend. I'm still gonna, that's skipjack number seven. I just need like, three to five more so I'm just gonna work this area here back and forth until I get them I ain't gonna bother going to that bank spot cuz we got enough we got enough to get what I need right here we are about out of battery though where we at now 17 percent looks like where we at three air three hours and 43 minutes Let's see if we can make it down through here a little further see if we can get maybe Maybe we can end this video on a fish. How awesome would that be? Some dogs over there going swimming. I know one thing I'm gonna do when I turn this camera off, I'm gonna shed some layers. As that sun has gotten out, it has gotten significantly warmer and I don't need to be out here in no hoodie and no bibs right now. Be working up a sweat. This woman out here having her morning coffee. She might get to watch us reeling a fish here in a minute. Right there, by gosh. Right on cue. Come on in, Skippy. Mirage number eight. Well, we've caught more skipjack than we have bluegill today. Ain't that something? 
wasn't how I drew it up in my mind, I'll tell you that. I've been getting more. When I fished through here lately, I've gotten more closer to the bridge back here than I have anywhere. Might even have, before I even get back to the car, I might have what I need, not even have to turn around. I wonder what they do with them dogs up there when they've been in the water. They bring them back in the house all wet. Daphne gets wet, I make her stay outside till she dries off. That wind's really kicking up now. I think we're done ultralight fishing for the day. For sure, because we'd have a huge bow in our line trying to cast back here. This ain't gonna be possible to feel anything. The weatherman got it right today, it's right on cue. That's how it is this time of year though, man. You go out, you get on the water at dawn, flat calm. By lunchtime, 30 mile an hour winds. It's just un unbearable. But at least we got a few hours in this morning before the winds got up and if I can get a few more skipjack here in this area, have my bait caught for the tournament, and then we'll go and get this the other kayak scrubbed down this afternoon. And I might even be proactive and get packed up tonight. Be ahead of the game, folks. Even got us some exercise in out here today, pedaling as much as we have work on my work on my lower abs doing this yeah wind boy I mean it's like it come out of nowhere buddy when we rounded the bend in this creek and got in here it's like we must have been kind of shielded from it on the other side there where we was at Yeah, folks, we're down now to, where are we at? Down to 10% on the battery, folks. <laughs> it's about time to wrap it up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ditch some layers here, get rid of this hoodie and these bibs and see if I can cool off a bit now that it's warming up. It's nice we're in that time of year where it actually does warm up. It makes fishing so much more enjoyable. Only downside is warm, nice days. You got a bunch of people on the water. You can't turn around without seeing one. But uh, yeah, y'all, not the most productive ultralight trip, but still had some cool experiences, caught some fish, catching some bait now for the tournament. So tournament video, assuming I catch some fish, I can't post a skunk tournament video, but assuming I catch some fish in a tournament, whether I finish first place or dead last, that should be the next video that y'all see. I had one tap me at the end. Uh, but that should be the next video after this. So anyway, y'all, thanks for coming along with me today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun. I've had fun despite all the people and minimal fish catchers. I've still had a good time. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching and don't get AT&T internet service. Lesson learned on my end, sleazy salesman, don't buy it so anyway that's my pro tip on life right there anyway y'all i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching